very soon. Uh, welcome to the live stream. We're just getting. All right, so we're going to be starting this very soon. Welcome. My name is David Garibaldi. We're here with the Mark Bell. What's up, everybody? Welcome. So uh, we're just we're going to be starting in just a few minutes. Uh, as you're joining us, we would love to know where in the world are you? So what city, state, country? Where are you from? Uh, just let us know down below in the chat. And then uh, we'll be reading some of your, oh, there's a chat over there. Oh, we'll, uh, we'll, hey now. Can, can we turn that this way? I'm gonna, we're gonna do some <clears throat> shout outs too. There we go. Yeah. So uh, Nick, is it Ponobost? Sounds good enough. Look at those emojis. I think it's a weightlifting emoji or it's gymnastics. Be careful with those emojis, they mean something. Nowadays. I know, it is. So yeah, <laughs> drop some emojis. We're gonna start this very soon. Uh, I see Newcastle, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. What's up? Chicago. So before we get this started, we're just doing some last minute technical things. Let us know where are you watching this from. So Mark. I'm fired up and excited. I'm glad that some of uh, our family and friends can make it here to Super Training Gym. Yeah, welcome. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the live stream. Really appreciate it. We're going to kind of talk a little bit today about how uh, art is related to lifting and art is related to, I guess, uh, the body of work that I've been involved in for many, many years, which is fitness. Uh, it's a, it's a full-time job trying to keep yourself in shape. It's a full-time job trying to inspire people to lift and encourage people to uh, have a good diet. And uh, I love what David does and I had an opportunity to go over and uh, watch uh, what he does in his studio and was really uh, just super impressed by it. And I was like, hey, maybe we should get together yeah. and do something at Super Training Gym. And so now uh, here we are today uh, doing this demonstration. You know, whatever Mark and I do, we end up sweating. <laughs> so whether we're doing lawn, lawn work, or lifting, uh, but uh, also- I actually don't know how to do lawn work. Ray, let me know how My wife does uh, far we are into <laughs> this. Um, can we go to just the opening scene, the, the pre-painting? All right, we're gonna get this started. What? Let's go. Intro. Yep. All right, awesome. Are we live? We are live. All right, so this is uh, this is some pre-painting chat. Again, we're here at Super Training Gym, and we're with Mark Bell. So we, he was just touching on before we started how we ended up here, but you know, tell us why are we here? Like, what's the inspiration behind today? Uh, a lot of uh, the Super Training Gym was uh, designed and developed uh, for very selfish reasons. I wanted to try to become one of the best power lifters in the world. And I recognized very quickly that I wasn't going to be able to do it by myself. And so when I had an idea to create a powerlifting gym, I knew I needed to be around like-minded people. And to be, in order to be around like-minded people that cared about one thing, which is getting stronger in this case, I needed to make the gym free. So <laughs> that was a giant hurdle to try to figure out with my wife, Andy, uh, how we could have a free gym and how we can offer powerlifting. But, all while I was doing that, I was developing the skill of learning how to lift, teaching people how to lift, and continually learning and growing. And uh, over a long period of time, I was able to squat 1,080, bench press 854 pounds, and deadlift 766 pounds. So in a sense, it worked. Uh, and now it's just a huge honor to have Super Training Gym and to have the gym is still free. Yeah. We're here at 855 Riverside Parkway. West Sacramento, California, and anybody that ever wants to come in here, every Saturday and Sunday, the gym's wide open, no strings attached. The gym is actually free. You can come between uh, 10, uh, 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Can we go to this camera right here? I don't know if, if they can pick us up. Hey, Ray. Hey, Ray. Can we go to this camera right here? I don't know if they can see what's happening behind us, but uh, let's go right here. So while I'm painting, we're gonna be having some lifting going on right next to me. That's the first time for me. Uh, but again, we're, we're just, anytime Mark and I get together, we're gonna be sweating somehow. <laughs> You'll be sweating at some point, I hope. I, I hope That's not. my goal. At dinner tonight, uh, don't Maybe. sweat. Maybe, yeah, the meat, the meat right. sweats. Uh, but you know, uh, and then real quick, before we get started into the first of four paintings today, we are doing something special with these paintings. So this first painting, do you wanna announce that now? Yeah, let's, you know, let's show this out. So the first painting I'm gonna create for, for everyone during the live stream 
it'll actually be made available as a custom sleeve. Is that right? A t-shirt. Oh, the t-shirt. Custom t-shirt. Right. <laughs> the t-shirt. So we're gonna be doing a custom t-shirt. The painting will be transferred immediately, and we'll have a sample before the stream is over. And How's that possible? Be, you know, your, your team. Modern you're, technology you're or something? What's going on? magicians that work here. So. I think I make it that quick. I, I don't know. I don't believe it. We're going to show you. So <laughs> as it's coming to life, just keep that in mind. The first painting will actually be available as a t-shirt before the live stream is over. And then the last three, we have some special plans with those, mm. but we'll share that as we go on. So how about this? In the, if you're watching this uh, on the live stream, in the chat, if you're ready to get this started, just give us a flex emoji. Oh, there you go. I, just need, I need a flex emoji wherever you are. And also continue to let us know where you're watching this live stream from, city, state, or country. So I just need to see some flex emojis. That's the inspiration I need right now. <laughs> I'm super uh, excited to be teaming up with David here today. I think that uh, the parallels that we have in life, you know, there's, there's so many things that, as humans that we have in common, uh, but we tend to focus on our differences and fight and feud over those kinds of things. But I don't know how to even draw like a stick figure, but <laughs> To Neither go do and I. Neither yeah, do I. it's it's pretty it's pretty bad, um, but to go and watch what David's able to do and to see uh, him tour around around the country and around the world and uh, do famous paintings with with Kiss or do uh, paintings at a halftime show of uh, the NBA and things like that. These things are all things that don't happen by mistake. It takes a lot of hard work, takes a lot of dedication. And I've been very fortunate to be around some really high level performers, whether it be doctors in the fitness industry or people that can deadlift a thousand pounds uh, or it's bodybuilders that have won multiple um, Olympia championships. I've had a great opportunity to rub elbows with a lot of the best in the world. And it turns out that really what they did is they just followed their interest. They found something that they're interested in and they were interested in it long enough to do it for a really, really super duper long time. <laughs> when did you start painting? Man, I, I'm 38 now. I started uh, doing it professionally when I was 20. And so there's a whole story to that. Actually, I'll share that, how I got into it. Um, but exactly what you said, you know, you continue to follow your passion. And today will be a mixture of creating and a little inspiration. So I'm ready to get started. There's a lot of yeah, let's do flexes it. in the comments. Keep those flexes going. You, ready? you guys ready? Let's go. All right. Blank. You got a mark cam as well. I, I, what if I'm, what if, I can't, I can't if, be over. If you want to get. I can't be over this way more. You can do whatever you want. He's, he's kicking me out, I think. <laughs> All right, I'm that over here. I'll behave, I'll behave. Moving a monster of a man away. All right. <laughs> you ready, Ray? Awesome, let's do it. started when I was four. No, I was kidding. Uh, bullet points in my life is that when I was a kid, uh, I bought a story that I was dumb, that I was stupid, that I couldn't learn. And it was very crippling. And it was, the reason why I say I bought the story is because when I went to school, it turned out that I wasn't as, uh, I wasn't as quick as some of the other children uh, when it came to certain um, types of things scholastically. Um, as it turns out, it's just that I think differently and I would maybe think a little uh, more slowly than others, but as I moved on later in life, that ended up being a huge virtue. But a lot of times I think we get confused and we think that we have a disability or we have something. I was told I have a learning disability and that I uh, was dyslexic and so I, I took that and it was like my protection. I was like, I can lean on this. Anytime someone asks me to do something that's difficult, I can just hold this in my back pocket and I can whip it out and say, hey, no, here's a card that shows you that I can't do what you just asked me to do because I'm too slow, I'm dyslexic. So I bought that story and I even sold it to other people and it became part of my identity. And I was like, well, I'm dumb, so I don't know what to do with myself. So maybe instead of using my brain, I should use my body. And I was fortunate enough to have great parents, my dad right here, 
I lost my mother this past year, RIP. Uh, but my, I was fortunate to have a really good family and have a strong uh, unit behind me. My brothers were already into lifting. And so I was very lucky in the sense that they introduced me to lifting at about 12 years old. And that saved my life because it gave me something to lean on. I didn't recognize it until I was probably about 30 something years old um, before I ever kind of became anything or turned into anything or showed up on the IRS's uh, radar. So I wasn't able to figure out how to make uh, $1 because I was crippled by my own belief that I was dumb. But after transforming my body and being able to bench press 400 pounds and 500 pounds and 600 pounds and so on, as I moved up the ladder, I was like, people are coming to me, asking me a lot of questions about lifting. And I keep talking to them about how consistency is a huge component of this and how being excited and being fired up for it is a huge component. But then I started talking about the science of lifting. I started talking about the X's and O's and the numbers behind it and how you can build a bigger bench or build a bigger squat or build a bigger deadlift. So out of nowhere it seemed like I started talking about these more complex ideas. Through that I gained a lot of confidence in myself and started to break down that barrier that I thought I was too dumb to do anything. And I think it's a common thing that I noticed amongst people in the gym is we're all here for these reasons that we don't even really know why we're here. But as I talk to different people in the gym, the things that people have overcome inside a super training gym and inside other fitness communities in the world is absolutely mind-boggling. It's mind-numbing. And we think about like medicine and all these different things that people want to take uh, to get over stress, to get over anxiety, to get over depression. The greatest pill you will ever take is self-examination and figuring out a way for, to find self-improvement. And for me, that ended up being in the gym. career and even for any of you that are successful in anything this all takes a really long time you have to stop looking at things in life as, uh, as like a brick wall instead of a brick wall you need to view it more as a hurdle with some training you can figure out how to jump over a hurdle and for me that hurdle was just being trapped in that because I might not have made it. Like, I, I would not have made it if I didn't have great parents. I wouldn't have made it if I didn't have my brother Chris and my brother Mike to yell at me and to tell me that I was weak and that I need to, I need to lift some weight. So it was a huge thing for me, and I know that David has relied and leaned on Art throughout his entire life to help pull him through uh, some various hurdles and some various things that he had to uh, get around and, and get through in his life. Yeah, absolutely. Damn. So you asked me earlier, handsome you know, guy. when I started painting, I was 20 years old. I had been doing art my whole life, and at that time, you know, I had, uh, I had just lost my job. I, I was fired. I started <laughs> my job. My car was repossessed, and the apartment that I was living in, I had just traded it for a mural. Like, that's how, I, I couldn't even pay the rent, so I was, I was kind of that deep into it, and I just realized something had to change. And I'm sure we've all we've been in those moments where if, if you don't change in that moment, you don't, if that isn't your call to action, things are going to stay the same. So I just thought, what's one thing that can't be repossessed or taken from me? And that was just getting serious about my art. So I just started painting live, didn't ask questions, just showed up to this nightclub in downtown Sacramento, brought my brushes, and that's kind of where it started. So from there, I think it was every day asking myself, how do I get better at this? How do I, 
how do I share it better with the world or how do I improve just personally in, in, in relationships and so on and you know that was that's sort of the the base of the journey there's obviously a, a lot more but what uh what kind of self-doubt did you have before you got on a tear with uh being able to paint the way you're able to paint now um I think I think you know there's now what I know it's called called imposter syndrome you're like who am I to think that I can be a world famous artist when I have no money in the bank, I'm a, a, you know, no one from Sacramento at the time, who do you think you are? Well, that, that's what I would tell myself. So the biggest hurdle was just getting over my own self-doubt of what I, I feel like I deserve in my life to, to, to at least earn and work for. I love it. I, I think something that I've learned that might be helpful and useful to some of you or might be helpful and useful for you to share with other people uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts, I have my own podcast, and I'm always seeking out information from other people, but the greatest interview that you'll ever do, I think, is with yourself, because that's where most of the answers are. Most of the answers to all of your problems, I would say all of the answers to all your problems, are already within you. They're, they're, they're sitting there, and you actually know what to do. Uh, one of the famous uh, researchers and nutritionists in, in the entire world is a guy named Andy Galpin. And he said that if you stare at somebody long enough, they'll give you the right answers to nutrition. So somebody might say, hey, like if I'm on a diet, can I still have wine? And he said, if he <laughs> stares at you, <laughs> you'll come to a logical, logical conclusion. That you'll say, oh yeah, probably I shouldn't you know, be able to drink every night or I shouldn't be able to eat ice cream or pizza. Uh, By the way, the th I asked him that earlier. So <laughs> yeah. that's, he's talking about me. Yeah. That, I get asked that. I get asked that a lot. And you can do it, but most of the time, you know, when it comes to things like that, uh, they're too enticing and we tend to overeat on them. Anyway, um, this is really cool to watch David, you know, put these together and something that he asked me to do just earlier today. He was like, hey, what quotes would you like to put with some of these images? So it's quotes that I've said over the years or things that I've held on to over the years. So in the comments, I would love to know what quotes that you guys would like to see. I'd really appreciate you guys uh, helping us out in uh, creating this amazing piece of art that we got here. I took this picture of Mark this morning <laughs> as soon as he woke up and he's like, what are you doing in my house? Yep. You're supposed to be at the gym, so. Not looking too happy about it. <laughs> David mentioned a little earlier about, um, you know, not having any money, you know. All of us have beginnings that, um, you know, don't, aren't, represent are, aren't a good representation of like where we're at now. And I think sometimes when people see me on Instagram or they see images of me and they think, oh, you know, he's got a, a good physique or it's, I would love to have done the things that he's done uh, with powerlifting. They've all been things that have been done through small incremental progress, step by step. It took a really long time to be able to do any of these things and you'll find in your own journey, no matter what it is that you want to do, it's going to take you a really long time. I actually have noticed that within lifting, it takes a minimum of a decade for someone to be what I would consider to be good at lifting. I ran into a kid one time, he was about 18 years old, and he squatted 600 pounds, and I was like, oh, I was like, I think I gotta throw my theory out the window. I was like, this kid's super strong. And so I watched him do the lift, he squatted 600 pounds really easy, and his dad's like, isn't that a trip? He's able to do it, so, he's so young. And he goes, he started when he was eight. And I was like, oh, my theory still holds true. So it takes a really long time to uh, be able to advance and to be able to become what you wanna become. Something that I've held on to that has been helpful to me that I learned from a world famous bodybuilder, a guy named Jay Cutler, said, don't be fancy, be consistent. And so I think a lot of times our mind keeps jumping to these things that we want to do uh, that are new or different or we're uh, seeing somebody else do and we want to kind of jump over there and do that because we have anxiety that what we're currently doing isn't quite good enough or it's not enough in some way and you tend to kind of lose sight and you lose track. But the greatest thing that most of us can do is double down on what it is we're already good at. It is important to kind of like work on where you're weak and build those things up, but uh, I had trouble reading as a kid and still to this day, I'm not, uh, you know, not super excited about it, but I've never, never read a book. I've never read one book 
you know, front to back. So that's not to brag that I haven't read a book. It's to show you that I've just leaned into the things that I was uh, good at from the time I was a kid. That's looking pretty right. crazy. It's coming to life. Now, we, we got to hit the first one with that, with the, the world famous lift through it quote. All right. So we're we going to, I'm just going to darken this a little bit and then. I love it. You know what would be cool is if you wrote one of the words. All right. Is I'll that see. cool? Yeah. All right. All right. Let me, let me I'm just get need this help prepped. with spelling, I think. <laughs> it uh, doesn't seem too long ago, and there's some people in this room that would remember some of these stories. My, my friend uh, Ben Alderman over here, my buddy Jesse Burdick is around here somewhere, and some other people know some of these stories, but it wasn't that long ago that I remember driving through the uh, the drive-thru at, at uh, Dutch Brothers Coffee in my, <laughs> in our Honda Odyssey. And uh, I remember the horn would go off all the time because there was a time where I was doing something and I was with both of my kids and I just got super frustrated and I punched the horn as hard as I could, which I normally don't ever do anything like that, but I punched the, ho the horn as hard as I could and then the horn from that point on was broken. And so it periodically honk. And so I'm like driving through Dutch Brothers uh, Coffee to pick up, co to grab some coffee. My friend owns the coffee stand to make matters 10 times worse. And as I'm waiting for my coffee, the horn would go <laughs> kind of over and over again. And I would just always look behind me to pretend that somebody else was beeping at me. I'd be like, believe this guy behind me has got no patience. And I would drive off. But, you know, I know all of you probably have stories that are similar where you had to uh, eat a giant shit sandwich without the bread. It's like part of life. It's, it takes time to kind of get through those things and around those things. And for me, being attached to lifting, it really did allow me to lift through it. Is my brother around here somewhere? Where's he at? He's somewhere. I don't know where you went. All right, I just need one of the most powerful words on here from you. All right. It. That looks amazing. Because it is really the placeholder for right. insert, yeah, what? you know, yeah. life struggles. So right. I'm gonna have you hit, the, hit it with uh, some spray paint. Awesome. Is that cool? Have you ever spray painted before? No, I never have. All right, you guys, this is first. Hey, how, how many deadlifts have you done in your life? Actually, oh, how many did we do? Yeah, did okay. That, yeah, I taught him how <laughs> to deadlift. So I've he's gonna teach me how My to spray paint. My girlfriend Chadi is an amazing, you know, just fitness person. So she's, she's taught me a couple. We've done a, a few. Andy, yeah. how nervous are you right now? Scale of one to 10 of me putting the letters on here. Actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think her anxiety is through right. the roof right you now. You got this. So really, any anywhere here. All right. Anywhere here. And then after that, we're going to splatter some paint. We're going to get this thing off to uh, have some magic done to turn into a shirt. Can, can, is, are we able to like Botox any of this? Or oh, oh no, that's maybe all. Maybe fill in the lips a little <laughs> bit more and no? All right. All right, so just any, anywhere here. All right. You go a little closer, go a little closer. Closer to the? Yeah. Oh, stay closer. Yes, go closer. All right, <laughs> that's a good start. That's a good start. <laughs> it's a collaboration, so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna just. I, I did, I, I will have to admit, I did make it a lot better. <laughs> there we go. All right, so let's. Nailed it. I'm gonna splatter some paint on this, and then we're gonna wrap the first one up. And we got Very three cool. more to go today. Make some noise for Mark. It's okay. We can show some love. Wow, that was embarrassing. Again, that's <laughs> like me, him saying, "All right, now go over here. Can you just do this lift for me real quick?" Like it's, it's very different. All right, this is my favorite part. We're gonna show you guys a little bit of lifting here in a minute. I got my buddy, my buddy Cade over here. He's uh, hitting up some benching, and so we're gonna mix mix in a little bit of lifting with the uh, with the painting that we're doing. Yeah. Andy, do I look handsome or no? Not so much. All right. Ready for this? 
All right, that is a handprint. So, so what we're gonna do is we're, this thing's gonna come off the truss. They're gonna go somehow do some magic, turn this thing into a shirt, and this shirt will be available after or like near the end of this uh, live stream. So you, you're gonna wanna stay tuned for that. Yes. All right, so uh, in the, oh yes, yeah, let's get a photo. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. And then one more, do it, go on this side over yep. here. Try to make the same face. <laughs> By the way, guys, this is just the one painting uh, of three more to go, one of four. So, all right, let's get this thing off. Fantastic. Uh, Ray, you got that? All right, in the meantime, let's yeah, run over to the bench press. I think yes. Cade's over here. Don't trip. Yeah, yeah, don't trip. Oh, there's my brother. Yeah, go ahead what and What do we got on here, Cade? Uh, over 75, I think, if I can ask. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Looks cool on IG. All right, we got 475 pounds on here, and we're gonna actually not only watch Cade do a little bit of benching, but we're also gonna teach you how to bench press, because a lot of these movements, they take a long time to learn. I think uh, a lot of people just kind of think they know how to do a lift in a particular way, just because they uh, maybe saw them, you know, someone do it in gym class when they were a kid, and they think they know how to squat, they think they know how to bench or deadlift, and they take it for granted that it's actually is a real skill set. As you guys were seeing, David chucking paint everywhere, <laughs> and you saw my demonstration of my artwork and how poor that is, that is a real skill set. It's very hard to have that all organized in your head. And when we're lifting, it's not any different. We have to organize a lot of different thoughts in our head as we're doing the lift, so it gets to be challenging. If you're just lifting the bar, it's not that bad. If you're you know, lifting sub-maximal weights, it's not that bad. But once we start to get a lot of weight on there, it starts to get really confusing really quickly on how to organize your spine or how to organize your shoulders or your neck position. It gets to be a little confusing. So we're gonna have, are you ready to bench or you need more rest? Uh, just a little bit, uh, like, one, of the, one, of the, one of the biggest elements of powerlifting, some of you will love this that if you have never powerlifted before, unlike a lot of other sports, one of, the, uh, one of the things we get to do the most in powerlifting is rest. You get to just chill and you actually get to eat. You get to eat some of your <laughs> some of your favorite foods because a huge component of being able to move weight is to be big. It, the more that someone weighs, the easier it is for them to move a lot of weight. That doesn't mean you have to be uh, you know go too crazy with that. But I did used to weigh 330 pounds when I was powerlifting, and it made it a lot easier for me to move around the weights that I did. I would get underneath a 500-pound bench press, and it, it it felt really light because I had all that extra body weight, muscle and fat, behind me in order to do it. You're gonna see he's gonna uh, wrap up. He's throwing on some wrist wraps. We wanna protect ourselves before we wreck ourselves. And when we do a wrist wrap, you wanna make sure you're not only just wrapping the wrist, but you wanna wrap a little bit part of the fist as like a boxer would do, because we wanna keep this part stable. Things tend to work upstream and downstream. And so if we have the wrist uh, protected well, then the elbow might be protected a little bit better. It might help us stay in better position throughout the entire lift. You also see he's got a lifting belt on, which isn't a huge deal normally on a bench press, but our spine is kind of twisted in a weird position. We're trying to arch, and so it can sometimes be super uncomfortable. So He's got 475 pounds. Ooh. Okay, okay. two reps. Come on. Come on, buddy. Oh, come on, two good reps. I'm gonna notice the setup is really critical on, on how you get yourself aligned with the bar. So this is a whole ritual and a whole entire technique. You can see he's got his chest up in the air. Two, one, up, out, 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 release. There you go, Kate, yeah. strong, nice. Yep, there you go, good. Yeah, hold, rack. Let's uh, reduce the weight, maybe down to like two plates. Okay, two plates. As you can see, it's really challenging. You start to get a good amount of weight on there. We're gonna give you a little demonstration when uh, I can actually kind of walk someone through it, uh, rep per rep and on all the different things we're trying to do. But you're really trying to organize your shoulders. We organize the shoulders by doing what I would call a reverse shrug. Like, so instead of kind of being like this, we're gonna push the shoulders down and pull the chest up. 
And with our arms, you know, the, the way to do the worst bench press would be to extend your arms out the furthest, the longest, would be this way. This would be a really long bench press, right? So instead of doing that, we wanna make ourselves shorter. So we're gonna take our shoulder blades, push them downward and push them backwards a little bit. And our elbows are still at full extension right here. And we were gonna bench press from there. All right. <clears throat> sit at the end of the bench, you know, how you sit down. But it is important, I think, to get into a routine and get into a rhythm. So what I like to do is on bench squat, deadlift, any of the lifts I do in the gym, I always utilize the barbell to help get me in position. So I, I work everything around the actual bar itself. So you're gonna see, as I lie back, I'm gonna grab the bar and I'm gonna pull my shoulder blades down and underneath me, trying to tuck my shoulder blades into my back pocket, which I'm not very flexible or mobile, so I won't come close to doing any of that. But really just trying to keep the chest high and remember what I said earlier about the reverse shrug. I think almost everybody knows about a shrug or just saying like, I don't know, well, I don't care, right? So if your arms would be here, we wanna actually push your shoulders towards the ground and this would be our bench press position that we wanna start from. Another easy way to think about it is just to turn the palms over. Home, right? Just turn the palms over and kind of meditate. But we wanna have our arms in this position because as we go to come down in a bench press, we're trying to envision that we're bending the bar. You wanna bend the bar around your body because we wanna tuck our elbows in close to our sides. As the elbows are in close to our sides, it helps protect the shoulder. The shoulder's gonna be compromised at the bottom of the bench press, which is where you're at the least mechanical advantage, is at the bottom of the bench press. And so we have to kind of, uh, we have to be prepared and be ready for that. And the way to get ready for that is to pull the elbows in close to the body. If the elbow's out wide, as you go to bring the weight down, your elbow travels past the midline of your body very far, and this isn't gonna kill you, you're not gonna die, you're not gonna go to jail, but you will probably at some point end up with an injury somewhere because that's a lot of stress on your shoulder. We wanna minimize that a bunch, so we just go boop and bring the elbow down in there. So here's what it looks like. Oh, I feel like I've been doing this my whole life for some reason. You wanna make sure that your hands are, are even. So where you put your hands is kind of irrelevant, but you wanna make sure that they're spaced out evenly. Sometimes people will go a thumb grip, they'll use their thumb as a measure away from the smooth part of the bar and they'll bench from there. I like to bench off these power rings right here. So I put my pinkies there. And then, like I said earlier, I'm gonna utilize the bar to get myself in position. So I'm gonna pull my shoulder blades together and kind of down and in. And now that feels like a pretty good position to bench press from. I'm gonna unrack the weight. And as I come down, bring the elbows in and push the weight back up. You can bring it down more controlled. I just kind of like to move the weight around fast just because I think I'm fancy. But bring the elbows in close to your body. As you go to push the weight, legs are tight throughout the entire range of motion. And you want to kind of push up and back in a little bit of like an arc. And here, a lot of people don't know that it's really important to have what's called leg drive. You want your legs in there the entire time. Uh, without leg drive, it just is a lot harder to do the lift because you don't have the same stability. So there you go. That's how you bench press. Let's get back to painting, huh? That was pretty wild. 475 bench for two reps. 475 Whoa, bench. bench. Just on a Saturday morning. Yeah, just yeah, chilling. That's it. You know? By the way, I saw a, one of your rules posted around here. Uh, the tank no, top rule? No tank tops unless you could bench 415? 405. 405. Four plates. You know, I, I think I'm going to make that a rule in my, uh, <coughs> my, my it's studio a as well. It, I mean, it's a problem. It's a huge issue. with tank tops all the time. All the time. You're like, bro. Look, man. It's not like unless that. Unless you're benching 405. All right, we're gonna get to this next <laughs> painting. Uh, let's go to the center camera. And uh, we're doing four paintings today. One down, that first one will be coming back soon as a t-shirt and available at the end of this live stream. But let's get into painting number two. All right. All right. You know what it is already? I can tell, right. I can totally tell. Yeah. It's a spaceship. Yes. <laughs> right? 
See if we can grab my buddy over here, Jesse Burdick, have him come up, chat with him for a little bit. Jesse is a long time, long time, long time friend. He's my BFF, my big fat friend. And uh, Jesse and I have been lifting together and coaching people together for too long, I think. Yeah, too Right? And uh, you know, it's, it's just great to have friends and have some family here today and uh, to be on this live stream with you guys. And something I think, oh, there we go. We're getting a mic, we're getting a mic'd up. Something I think Jesse can share with you guys is, you know, talking about uh, lift through it and talking about just how important some of the consistency to all this really is. You don't have to be great at it. You just, just some dedication to whatever it is you're trying to be good at over a long period of time, being good for, with consistency, you'll end up with people telling you that you're great at something even when you're not even, it doesn't seem like the effort is astronomical. Here's Jesse Burdick. That seems like such an insult. <laughs> <laughs> Like here's someone who's not that great at stuff, but just has stuck around long enough, done it for long enough that he's fairly okay and you know, right. he gets to seem like I'm all right. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, when you started the whole Lift Through a campaign, I think it was, you know, built out of a lot of things that you've gone through and, you know, something that I can certainly relate to and I'm sure everyone else can relate to in some um, way, shape or form. And I think it's important to have that sort of a North Star, that sort of a constant in your life and um, for a lot of people um, who may not be uh, an artist or um, artistic at all, like I, was, I was telling people that if you gave me five years and I could trace what he just did, I wouldn't be able to do that at all. This is just insane. Mind it's it's my it's, it's it's just so foreign to watch and you know to be a part of it. It's, it's amazing. Um, but to have something that you love to do, something that um, gives you purpose, something that you can do every day. You know, I always kind of think of like Fight Club, you know, yeah. Fight Club became the reason to cut your nails, you know, trim your hair and do all that stuff. And, you know, lifting is, uh, fortunately for, for, for me, was that thing. You know, once I retired from baseball, I needed something else to do and uh, picked up lifting. And, you know, it's been able to, uh, you know, save my life and give me a life and, uh, you know, help me provide for my wife and kids and you know it's uh it's been a it's been an amazing time uh when my oldest brother uh died years ago i called him up he's my best friend so he's the first phone call and uh we got talking and right away he's like where are you at like and where are you going and then just not too much after that was okay when's the next time you're gonna go to the gym <laughs> not because i mean it might sound like an ultimate meathead thing but it's like Let's see if there can, we can sneak in some normalcy in your life. Same thing when his brother died. The first conversation was, we didn't actually really talk about lifting in this case. We actually were on our way to do a seminar. So yeah. when he called me and told me that his brother died, I was like, oh, well, okay, well, unfortunately, okay, the seminar is canceled. We'll have to figure out something else. And we were traveling from California, from here, uh, to what? Uh, New, New York. New York. Uh, yeah, and we did a seminar in New Jersey. So I was like, oh, there's, well, there's just clearly no way that we're going to do that. And he's like, yeah, you know, it's going to be tough, you know, with traveling and everything, but you know, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Give me something else to do. I'm like, who is this guy? He's an animal. <laughs> but that was, that's kind of part of it is that you have something that's consistent, that's constant, that's in your life, that at least you can hang your hat on that. Yeah, it was, when I look back at it, it seems really foreign, but uh, you know, I'd made a uh, uh, a commitment, you know, when I say, hey, I'll be at the gym at five, I'm gonna be at the gym at five. Um, and when we did the seminar, I said, hey, we're gonna do the seminar there. And, you know, it was a commitment that I made and um, there was people who were there that were counting on us. And more than anything, Mark was there and, you know, it's my training partner and my, you know, best friend and I didn't wanna let him down at all. So um, it's just one of those things, again, that, you know, when you have something that can help you focus and kind of dial into something, it gives you a little bit more of a purpose and a reason to get somewhere for something, even when things are at their complete, absolute bottom and worst. So it's uh, it's important to have that. And you know, if if you don't have that, um, you know, go find a good gym, go find a good training partner, and you know, it's uh, it'll it'll revolutionize your life. It'll change your life. It'll save your life. It'll give you purpose. It'll give you everything. Uh, Joe. Uh... Bonilla, Bonillo, 
Thank you so much for the comment. I wish Jesse would take his diet more serious. <laughs> we really appreciate the kind words. Too smart to be that fat. <laughs> Somebody else uh, mentioned uh, the elbows up cue that I talked about a little bit, er or the palms up cue that I talked about a little bit earlier just kind of automatically helps you to kind of drop your elbows into the correct position uh, during a bench press. Jesse has deadlifted over 800 pounds many times on the platform as a competitive power lifter. What were some like key contributing things to being able to lift that amount of weight? Uh, consistency and finding out where weak points were and kind of attacking those and, uh, and just making sure I was doing everything outside of the gym that I needed to do to make myself successful, make sure that, you know, even though Joe would have, you know, thought differently, diet was dialed in, sleep was there, um, you know, stress was as low as I could do or, you know, manage stress just as much as I could. But um, more than anything, just uh, mastering technique, going, you know, people will oftentimes think very little of, you know, 50 to 75% sometimes. And what I did over and over and over again was singles with those, just making sure that I knew that I was moving uh, as efficiently uh, as I could. And um, when I got to those heavier weights, I had something to kind of fall back on and I was able to just, you know, take a step forward, think of it as just another day and uh, go out there and, and pull. Only Deadlift wants to know why you're not using chalk to paint this. Oh my God. Is <laughs> Have you ever painted we, anything we with chalk? We can throw some chalk yeah, on Yeah, we this. can throw some there chalk on Yeah, if you really want it, we'll make yeah. it happen. All right. <laughs> I think that would be cool. Yeah. Is this that time that I did those sprints? Does it look like, yeah. <laughs> that one time? Does that, has that never happened? You're right, <laughs> pretty much. Yourself? How old were you, David, when you kind of uh, discovered that that you were uh, going to go down this road here? Um, I, I knew I wanted to create at a very young age. So I share this story a lot, but growing up, I was into, I was always an artist, but I was also into music. So I played the trumpet from third grade to high school. Um, I also got into dance as well in high school. So that's, I, everything that I got into, I was like, that's what I'm gonna do. So I thought I was gonna be a backup dancer for Justin Timberlake. <laughs> if you saw me dance and play the trumpet, you'd be glad that I'm painting right now. Um, <laughs> wasn't so I, in the cards. I just, yeah, I just loved creating. Uh, but it really wasn't until a moment where I, I had to decide, I had no other choice. It was either you're gonna start creating now and find a way to you know, take care of yourself off it or just go find a job. Nothing wrong with that. But that was a very critical time because if it hadn't happened at the time, I wouldn't be on the path that I'm on now. Mm. We wouldn't, I don't think we would have been here. Right. And I think that's a lot of people need to listen to that voice, that, that call to action that you know, happens in, in life experiences where you do need to act in the moment. And sometimes you're like, this, is, this doesn't feel right. This is kind of crazy. Um, but again, it was in line with what I loved and what I wanted to do. So. What, uh, what move did you make that kind of was something that moved the needle for you that helped you maybe not be such a starving artist? <laughs> um, you know, my first, my first publishing deal when I got when I was maybe 21 years old, I, uh, I got this deal from this uh, company in San Francisco, but I had to go to New York to go to this art expo to do it, and I had a friend that flew me out there because he knew I couldn't afford anything. So I just, I went out there, I hustled, I went to this uh, art expo, handed out brochures, introduce myself, you know, the old school cold call, say hello. Mm. And then that put me on the map in a sense of they were out promoting my work. Wow. And then that was some steady income stream where I could then start figuring out the performance. Mm. Like, cool, we have a publishing deal. Let's now figure out how to do these live shows better. So um, real quick though, before we move on. So, I, you know, the, right now I imagine this big tire. You're yeah. not running, you're gonna be lifting, but we're incorporating quotes. So it. what quote do you envision pushing through, lifting through? Yeah. I think a great one would be strength is never a weakness. Strength is never a weakness. Yeah. All right. All right. Something I end every video with. I've that. ended up shooting thousands of videos over the years talking about deadlifts and squats and bench press and all these different things. And even in talking to friends and family about the importance of lifting and what it can do for you, how it can change your metabolism, because having more muscle can uh, just help chew up calories even when you're at rest. 
Um, I remember going to see my dad, who is indestructible apparently. He nearly died a couple times. And uh, when, when he was in the hospital and he was recovering, one of the first things they had him do was like a hip hinge movement where he was kind of coming up out of a chair. And I was like, they got you deadlifting, Dad. I'm like, this is awesome. And the next thing they had him do is hold on to something and he did a squat and then it wasn't too long after that that he was walking up and down the, walking up and down the, uh, the hallway. But stre strength is never a weakness. It, it's um, something that Jesse and I have talked about in seminars before where we've said, I don't really recall hearing anybody saying, hey, I wish I was weaker in that fight. I could have got my ass kicked a lot better. I wish I was weaker during that football game. I could have gotten uh, pancaked more <laughs> or whatever it might be. So strength is a huge component of everything that we do in life, even how we handle stress and even how we uh, take things on. If we're stronger for stuff, in my opinion, we're just more prepared for it. And uh, the more prepared for it you are, the easier it is to kind of deflect and have it not negatively impact you uh, maybe nearly as much as it might negatively impact somebody else. The other side of that is while strength is never a weakness, weakness is also never a strength. So I mentioned to you guys earlier about how I've never read a book. It would be wise for me to start working on that to uh, you know, get involved in some reading and work on my weakness. Like what's that going to hurt? You know, If I work on my weakness and I start to attack it a little bit, I'm sure it will only have uh, pay dividends rather than uh, hurt me in some negative way. Oh my god. I just hope I spell everything right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do we have we have a, a spelling bee champion in the house? Yeah, do we have a spell checker? I've heard if you want to raise your engagement on social media, just spell things wrong <laughs> and people will oh, engage. And it helps. Very inflammatory. So I'm sure they'll let me know. Please let me know if you're watching this. So nowadays you have your own studio, David, uh -huh. and uh, I know that that's a dream for a lot of artists. What, yeah. How, how were you able to figure that one out, and were you uh, pretty like nervous to even to even do that? Yeah. So the studio that I'm in now, it, it's a it is a dream come true. Uh, it's probably my fourth studio. My first one was a one car garage mm. uh, in this apartment that I was living in at the time. So, you know, every step of the way, I, I've always sort of like, how do we just get a little bit more uncomfortable? How do we give myself a little more responsibility? So this one is crazy because we moved in March 15th of 2020. The day the world shut down, I'm banking mm. all this on, I do 100 shows a year, right. I could totally pay for this. And as soon as the world shut down, I honestly had no idea what was gonna happen next. And I was kind of, kind of thrown into what it felt like in the beginning. Like, this is what you wanted. You wanted to feel a little uncomfortable. Well, here it is 10 times. So. Uh, it, you know, it, it kicked my ass, got to work. We started, we sort of pivot and I say we, cause uh, at the time, you know, my, my girlfriend Chadi was coming in the studio, like holding the iPhones for the live streams and uh, little by little, we just started doing these live streams, virtual performances. And then it, you know, one income stream turned into five different ones just because of there's no other option. I mean, there's no other way. So it, it's a dream. I mean, you know, you could create anywhere. You know, artists don't think that you need a studio to create. You can create outside in the park, on the street, in your room, find a way to do it. Um, but, you know, for me, we were able, we able to set up a space where we can just create constantly, go in there. Ray, who's running the production today, uh, you know, helped us out as well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a dream come oh, yeah, true yeah. Sorry, along with the responsibilities. So we're at about, like, get, uh, Let's see who else we who else can we pick on here? How about Ben Alderman? Get grab Ben Alderman to come on up here. Ben has been a, a good friend of mine uh, locally here in Sacramento for 10, 12 years or so. He's kind of seen kind of the beginning stages of uh, me trying to invent a stretchy product that goes across <laughs> your chest to help you with bench press. And uh, high level uh, CrossFitter, a dad of like 77 kids. 78 now. 70, 78 kids, and uh, just another person that I admire. What's going on here today, Ben? What's up? Well, I mean, you mentioned I have a lot of kids, so I'm, <laughs> I'm in, in, in and out of here, but I wanted to support what you guys were doing, because yeah. this is awesome. So, um, just running my gym, actually just started working with more kids, um, mm -hmm. something you don't even know about. We haven't had a chance to catch up uh, on this, but uh, 
We run something that's called the Overcome Project. It's a nonprofit where we work with at-risk youth. Oh, cool. Yeah, so um, at-risk, I mean, we were talking about lifting, right. right? You're talking about sports in general. A lot of us have had great friends and peer groups that kind of revolve around gyms or sports teams. At-risk youth, foster kids, homeless kids, delinquent youth, they don't have those same peer groups to right. pull them out of the out of the crap, you know what I mean? So what I started realizing was, just like you've had a chance to rub elbows with some of the best guys in the sport, I've had chances to rub elbows with you, you know what I mean? And so, I appreciate and, that. And for me, that's, that's powerful. And so I want these kids to have something similar, some sort of connection that's very um, meaningful. And so when they, when they get out of their, their group home, we work with four group homes right now, um, when they get out of their group home, they don't have just their old peer group to go mm. to. They have, they have um, people in the gym, they have coaches, they have other guys who are there in their lifting, other ladies who are in their lifting. And so for me, that's uh, where we're putting a lot of our energy and effort. When I say we, meaning my wife and myself. What do you see uh, exercise do for them? Well, I mean, so far it's huge. So these guys are, are <laughs> I mean, they're trying to, they're trying to overcome uh, social workers who are kind of maybe see them as, you know, they're always going to be bad. You know, uh, parents who maybe don't want them anymore. Rejected, yeah. Rejected, yeah. You know what I mean? So now you're seeing these kids, they, they learn how to do a kettlebell swing. Mm. You know, it's like a kettlebell swing, if you've been simple, in the gym, yeah. it's simple, right? right? But you you layer these small wins on top of each other over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then they come back the next week and they go, hey, um, I did this workout at my house. And I'm like, you mean at your at your group home? Like you yeah. were in there? Yeah, and I grabbed one of the other guys and they were now they're doing it with me. And so they're creating positive interactions with each other. And and I don't know where those are gonna go. Right. You know what I mean? I don't know if there's enough momentum from that, but at least there's a shot. There's right. one more thing for them to be able to kind of move into a direction that's positive and, and contributing to society rather than taking from it. I, a lot of people don't know this, but like I think it's 70% of foster kids who age out of the program will be homeless inside of four months. Mm. What made you uh, jump into this? Like what made you kind of passionate about it? Um, well, my wife and I, as you know, uh, we adopted two little girls out of the foster system. Mm. They don't look like me, the, they don't talk like me, uh, they don't come from the same background as mm. I do, um, but we love them, you know what I mean? And But you can't adopt every kid. <laughs> right. You can't just take every kid who needs a, a, a warm bed or, or a hot meal and bring them into your house. And so we said, how can we, cool. how can we move the needle? How can we make an impact? And so that's what we do. What have you seen uh, lifting and some of the things that you teach at your gym? What have you seen, uh, how has that impacted some of the people uh, that you coach and that you help? I mean, you know, I'll, I'll go back to the kettlebell swing. I mean, if we can use the deadlift, we could use the bench, we could use even something as complicated as the snatch. Um, flipping a tire. Flipping a tire. But I had this conversation with a, a mutual friend of ours, Jason Kalipa, and, uh, and, and another guy who runs a, a really large corporation that Jason works with. And I said, do you think there's more millionaires in the world or more guys who can snatch their body weight or 300 pounds or whatever your, you know, this yeah. kind of elite level is. 300 pounds is a lot, yeah. Yeah, you know, and they go, well, there's definitely more millionaires <laughs> right. in the world, right? I said, well, if you can learn how to do this thing in the gym and figure out the weaknesses like Jesse was talking about, the proper technique, the food, and all those little things, then they can take that little slice of success and they can apply it to their mm -hmm. marriages, which I've seen, right? They can apply it to their jobs, which I've seen. They can take it and they can apply it to their businesses, which I've done and which I've seen. You know, and so for me, that's way more rewarding than just helping somebody get get lean. And right. we love being jacked and tan, but <laughs> right, right. you know what I mean. But it's what have you seen, like that. more specifically? What do you? Because we got some ladies out here and uh, ladies on the live stream here. Yeah. What have you seen it do for women? Just lifting and CrossFit and deadlifting and flipping tires and things that maybe ten years ago maybe they were more unconventional for women. <laughs> Oddly enough, uh, I was having this conversation with somebody last night. This, this girl that's a, that's a friend of my wife and I's, she's dating right now. She's still single and she's out dating. And um, the quality of guy that she has to find now, because she's so strong and she's so, uh, she takes care of herself and she's developed, uh, you know, just some athleticism in the gym. She's more confident. She's more confident, right? So a guy who's going to try to approach right. her has got to be a higher caliber human being, right? right? And that that's one little thing, right? But you take that, and if it empowers somebody to be able to take care of themselves, 
right? To be able to watch their kids, to be able to feel more um, uh, safe, right. you know? I mean, there's just a lot of weirdos out there, you know what I mean? So lifting weights, being stronger, you know, is not a bad thing. And then on top of that, you give them community, you give them a chance to just uh, interact with people of all shapes and sizes, and it's a safe place for them to yeah. do that, you know? It's a good thing. It's great. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate yeah, man. it, man. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. All right, so uh, I just finished up this painting. I've got to end every single what? one with a handprint. We'll go over here. All right, number two. Fantastic. Complete. Got something over here for you, David. All right. Is it a bath? Look at this. <laughs> oh, look at this. Wait, show, show it to this camera right here. Hmm. So the painting number one that I did. Look at that. Is, eh? is that eh? quick. That is the magic that happens here at uh, Super Training. <laughs> So the first paint, this That's this t-shirt will be up and live on your website. Yep. What's the website? MarkBellSlingshot.com. MarkBellSlingshot.com. And it'll be available starting at, at noon, at noon Pacific Standard Time. And for how long? For four hours. So basically from 12 noon Pacific Standard Time to 4 p.m., this shirt. I'm trying to throw it on right every now. Every single got, one will I have sweat from Mark Bell on it. Take my microphone. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Give me one second. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll put one on later. I'm gonna. I gotta keep my superhero costume on for now. Um, this doesn't normally happen on my live streams. Ow! I I don't undress on my live streams. Uh, kids at home, this is this is um the Hulk without the the makeup on. Yeah. <laughs> Our in-house model, of course. Andy can't control herself over there. Behave over there. Relax. <laughs> I think she's in the car in the parking lot now. I think she's going to she check she it out. Away. Man, that was quick. I should check it out. Look at that mug. Lift through it, signed. This is the first time I've ever done this where we create something and then minutes later, it's now a t-shirt. We also have the standard. Slingshot logo on the back. Mm -hmm. So we got that on the back. So this starts, uh, this will be available at noon Pacific Standard Time and only available for four hours. MarkBellSlingshot.com. That's it. So uh, we've got some more paintings to do. Let's, let's go ahead and switch out the, uh, the canvases and then we'll get to the next painting. In the meantime, uh, how are you feeling today? I feel amazing. Yeah. Yeah, what you need? I, I didn't, I thought it was gonna be sooner than we started undressing. I think this is oh, gonna okay. happen sooner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so yes, uh, so Josh said, dude is shredded. Yes, we know that. Mm. By the way, I just wanna do a quick reset. So we're here at the Super Training Gym in West Sacramento. Uh, can you share just a, a, another quick background about Super Training Gym, yeah, what it means sure. to you, and also uh, we'll, we'll kind of reset what we're doing here. Yeah, Super Training Gym is a powerlifting gym, also known as the strongest gym in the West. For many, many years, we've had very, very powerful men and women at Super Training Gym and what makes Super Training unique, what makes it different is that the gym is free because I'm passionate about powerlifting and I love the sport and I want to invite more people in. I want to lower that barrier of entry into Super Training Gym so you can come to Super Training Gym, 855 Riverside Parkway, West Sacramento, California. All I got to do is show up on a Saturday or Sunday between 10 and 1 and you're good to go. Yes, and then also you, you've got a lot of different things going on. So you got the gym. You've got uh, this amazing product, the Slingshot product line. Yep. What is a Slingshot? Because you invented this. Yeah, Slingshot is a supportive upper body device for bench press and push-ups and dips. Helps to alleviate pain in the shoulders and the elbows. And it's something I created about 10 years ago. And it, it's done really, really well. And once I made the Slingshot, it kind of became obvious to me that I should make other things that also uh, lower the barrier of entry into training, which a huge barrier is just getting hurt. Yes. Like lifting weights kind of hurts, and when you start to lift heavy, it hurts. So we make elbow sleeves and knee sleeves and uh, wrist wraps and knee wraps and just you name it. We try can to. I get a, can I toe. get a sleeve for my ego? Because <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> that hurts a, when I lift. Right, right, exactly. I know we uh, need an ego boost, but that's a slingshot. Kind of does that. Like if if someone can bench 200 pounds, a lot of times they can bench. 225 or 250 pounds when they wear a slingshot. It does kind of boost the ego a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And so you've got the slingshot. You've also got a, a very successful podcast as well. Yep, Mark Bell's Power Project. Make sure you guys check that out. We talk to many, many different kinds of individuals. I, I really just uh, am obsessed with personal development. Mm -hmm. So when I see someone goes from here to there, I want to talk to them. I want to communicate with them. Like, how did you... 
How are you able to go from what seemed to be not much to this other thing, whether it's yeah. you changed your body or you changed how strong you are or you became an amazing artist being able to do all the things that you can do. Yeah. Uh, I want to know more about that usually. And so those are the kind of folks that we interview on my show. And we obviously talk a lot about lifting and nutrition and health and things like that. Yeah, so obviously if you haven't picked this up already, Mark is an amazing storyteller and that is, I think, one of the most amazing things about you that has elevated you way beyond an athlete and, a, and an entrepreneur and all these other things you are just to make you an amazing person. So, uh, and again, these paintings, I've got two more left on this live stream, all inspired by these different quotes you have and, and principles you live by. So we're gonna Exciting. create another one. We're gonna bring you guys along and Mark will be talking to some uh, of his athletes and people that help him out on his journey here. But uh, let's get back into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Exciting. Excited to see what you got next. All right. Pulling out all kinds of crazy stuff. Man, let's do You think this. your uh, girlfriend would be uh, oh, yes. able to come up here and chat for a minute? Yeah, get her mic. <laughs> oh, she's shy all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, okay. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, please get Chadi on here. Actually, the next oh. two paintings are just of her. Did Mark. I mess it up? Hi, how are you? Are you doing good? good? Yes. Trying to give you guys something a little bit better to look at than <laughs> my ugly face, trying to like improve the overall look of what's going on here. So what's your story? How are you jacked and tan? What's uh, going on with this? <laughs> well, I'm tan because I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> okay, we got that part covered. That's half um, the battle. Actually, I, my story started in 2009, 2010. Um, I used to weigh over 200 pounds. What? And I have, was a high risk with my daughter and I just have a kidney disease and lupus. And I got into bodybuilding and it saved my life. And it changed my life. I um, decided I had a goal to compete. had no desire to do anything just than to compete. Mm -hmm. And just to have the courage to have myself accountable to get on stage for something, to stick to a goal. And from there, um, I, I remember seeing a girl in the gym with like really nice arms and she probably thought I was staring at her like <laughs> mean mugging her but I wasn't, I was admiring her and someone told me she was competing that day, uh, I'm sorry that week You're and like, I, what's that mean? <laughs> yeah I'm like what is that so I saw her compete, uh, it looked totally unattainable but I went home a week later thinking I want to start competing and I competed, um, lost a lot of shows and then I qualified um, I won a national qualifier in the Sacramento in 2009 um, for bikini, when bikini was brand new. And in 2010, I was the first Arnold bikini champion wow. overall. So from that, that kind of took my career off where I just landed a supplement contract, oh, great. Um, magazine publishing, and then I won two world titles with the WBFF as the World Bikini Championship. Awesome. Yeah, it's crazy. What, what are the main <laughs> things that contributed you from, uh, you know, going from 200 pounds and, and not feeling well and having lupus? Are, are you kind of over that now? Like, yeah. Are you able to? Yeah, it's stable now. I'm not yeah. on any medication. So how are you, like, was it mainly just habits or, like, I, I guess um, maybe let's start with, like, what I, do you think led you? Yeah. Did, were you an athlete when you were young? Yes. And then what do you think led you to end up heavier than you wanted to be? Yeah, I think that's a great question that you just asked because I feel like I had the tenacity to get back on it because I was an athlete, so I knew what it mm -hmm. took to not quit. And it's not all, it's not a one, one person sport, even though competing is a one person sport, um, especially body lift, body weight um, training. But um, I just knew that there's days that you're not gonna wanna work out or go to practice mm -hmm. or, but you, you commit to something and you have to show up no matter what, even when it's a bad day. Um, and at that time I was overweight and I just kind of implemented that blueprint to that. It's literally a blueprint to weight training, um, to any weight loss goal and just committing to it even when you have the worst day. And in fact, those worst days become better because you committed to something even when you didn't want to do it. Was the food the hardest part? Um, yeah, the food was the hardest part. It wasn't, it wasn't. I would feel like because I was a new mom, I, my body was hurting so much because I had never lifted before. I was an athlete, but I had never lifted. And so every muscle every day was like hurting. And so I was like, oh my God, this is impossible. But I did have a vision board 
that I had um, Mr. Potato Head where I had my face <laughs> and I had body parts of what I wanted my body to change and look like and I looked at it every day and that was like... Was this maybe uh, off of um, other images you saw of other yeah, women? Yeah, like mm -hmm. magazines, like okay. girls with really nice arms and a really like, you know, flat stomach and like definition on the legs and I had um, slogans where like, you know, strength is not weakness, stuff like that. Motivated you every day. Motivated me every day. And so every day I brushed my teeth, I had to look at it. Mm. Because it's very easy to fall off. It's very easy to like get distracted by the noise of the everyday life. And I knew that I committed to a goal and I just put my head down and kept working every day. And once that day came closer, everyone was noticing the changes. I wasn't because I look at yourself, you look at yourself mm -hmm. every day, but um, yeah, I think that that was, you know, you got to have something to look at every day as far as what your why is. Because if you don't have a why, it's going to be really hard to stick to a goal. Yeah, to figure out how to do it. Yeah. Um, what do you eat and or even what did you eat that kind of started the weight loss? Um, what I started doing was not healthy. <laughs> I did like some magazine <laughs> diet on some mag it was just like a supposedly like Victoria's Secret models what they do to lose weight after mm -hmm. to get back on stage and it was just horrible it was like do cardio. it's like coffee salad and fish and it was like not good um, I didn't learn about macronutrients until I started competing so what I did was not the healthiest um, but I would say stress a bad diet helped me initially but learning about macronutrients and micronutrients helped me a lot mm. to maintain myself at least. I think that uh, bodybuilding for some reason is kind of a secret to a lot of for a lot of folks like I don't know why people don't know more about it I don't know if it's the, the look of uh, some of the bodybuilders maybe isn't attractive to people or what it is but there's so many key components to bodybuilding that could really help people like bodybuilders don't under eat they actually eat a lot they mm -hmm. eat frequently yeah. and it, it's it is uh, hard but um, you know, during your diet, once you got a diet that was more manageable, uh, did you end up like ferociously hungry all the time, or, or, were you, or did you figure out like kind of something stable and sustainable yeah. that you were able to manage? Yeah, um, I would say never cutting out carbs was the key for me mm. because most women they want to stick to like the, per se, the salads and like the coffees and and that I would knowing what's in a salad sometimes a slice of pizza is way better. <laughs> and you'll probably get more out of that slice of pizza of, like, in a training session. Like that, yeah, yeah, it all adds up. And so I, I think learning about what's in our food, you know, and, and I, my, micronutrients is not for everybody, but it does teach you about portion control because nothing is off limits. And so you, have, you end up having a good relationship with food versus cutting out something that you really enjoy just to look a certain way that's not going to be attainable. So you count and weigh stuff? No, I did when I competed. Okay, now it's just intuitive I where know. I just know what my body needs as far as protein, especially carbs and fats, so, um, and I'm definitely not perfect when it comes to that. David's but I'm, after it back there. But I, I try to implement it with him, and he's just like, how do you eat so much? <laughs> and <laughs> look the way you do, and I'm like. Because you have to eat frequently, right? Yeah, well, I just eat a lot. <laughs> but yes, I eat frequently, and I eat a lot of portions, and, um, but it's weight training. It's really training. fun to go eat at restaurants, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, it's, and I honestly, it's because of muscle, the muscle I put on, I'm able to get away with a lot. And what about like, uh, I think sometimes females are kind of scared and even some guys are like, I don't, you know, I don't know like what it's going to do if I, if I lift. Mm -hmm. I mean, I you're, that person. you're, you're lifting and you're yeah. probably trying to get like bigger maybe? Like, are you try, like, you're, you're in there training hard, right? Yeah, yeah. And your body's not all of a sudden blowing up and being no. big, right? No, no. In um, misconception. Yeah, yeah. So when I first started training, my trainer, end up giving me something, I think it was like a 20 pound. It wasn't even that heavy at the time. I looked at it and I was like, he wanted me to do split squats. And I was like, I'm, I don't want to lift heavy. I don't want to get big. And he's like, this is not going to make you <laughs> big. And he's like, I'm like, but it's good. It's going to make my legs look bigger. And he's just like, and it was me just not knowing. And it was a misconception of just thinking that because you're going to lift heavier. And in fact, the fact that I lifted heavier, it sculpted me to make my legs look smaller and look mm more proportion than what I did when I didn't lift and when I ate less. So now I eat more, I lift heavier, and I weigh less, and I get into fit in the clothes that I love mm. to fit into. So lift weights, girls. It That's changes awesome. everything. Where can some of these people watch and where can they uh, find you if they want to find out more about you, watch you? 
Um, I'm mostly active on Instagram, which is um, Chadi, C-H-A-D-Y. And then on Facebook, sometimes um, my website is ChadiFit.com. How'd you meet this guy? We've known each other for 19 years. <laughs> so we've just known each other a long, long time ago. We've maintained friends and then we started dating three years ago. Yep. So I kind of just told him to be my boyfriend. He said, you're, <laughs> you're gonna, gonna be my do boyfriend. it and you're gonna like it. And he's like, okay. This is the way it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, no, he's my best friend. We've been friends for so long, so yeah. Has this been kind of interesting watching the creativity? It like, I, I gotta tell you, like I was blown away when he came in here the other day. Yeah. And he was just like, okay, here's how this is gonna go. Yeah. He was like, this is gonna go over yeah. here and that's gonna go over there. Yeah. And he could envision everything. Yeah. yeah. And a lot I was of like, people what don't, the hell? That uh, blow your mind when you yeah, learn a lot out of about him? People don't understand how smart he is <laughs> and how like he sees it like an me. eagle. <laughs> like an eagle, like he just sees everything different than the rest of the world does. So um, like the proportions, like how you like even writing the words, how right. you just told him strength is weakness and he was able to put that in a tire. Right. Where we would have right screwed it up. Yeah, no, <laughs> I would have to. That's graffiti. That's my graffiti background to help with that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, he's, and then also too, he's a businessman. Like he's, not many artists, anybody can, I'm, I'm not gonna say anybody could paint, yeah, yeah. but he's, got the he's other created side. a business yeah. out of it. And it's when he said that the, you know, COVID happened and all his shows were taken away, he was able to do live streams and entertain people and then also to create prints now where it's available to anyone who wants to buy an, you know, a piece of work. So, right. um, not again, a lot of artists don't think outside the box. They just think like on a canvas and although they're talented, hard work piece talent right. all the time. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You. Appreciate it. Bye. Love you. Love you too. This is going pretty good back here. It looks like starting to kind of shape up like there's a, uh, a, a chubbier mark and maybe a, a leaner mark. I, I think, I'm trying I think to it might be what we're transitioning right into. Now. Okay. I'm trying to. I'm trying to work on the tan part right now. Yep. Yeah, we got what like a kind of a, a old school like almost powerlifting image, right? Yep. Yep. And then so over here we got some bo bodybuilding. Just a little on. bit more, yeah, cut. I think that, and and this one I'm envisioning now. Your these are your quotes, but envision some sort of transformation because right. you've gone through so many you know there's growing up you know that growing up mark the right. the the time you were inspired to get into lifting and then even within that you've transformed so we you know we're gonna i want to put some sort of quote to bring it all right. together here but um so keep keep that in mind awesome yeah i'm excited if you guys have some quotes that you want to see uh in the comments over here that'd be great if you guys want to interject what you think would be good that would be cool and by the way, we are simulcasting right now on several channels. So across your YouTube and Facebook channels, yeah. my YouTube and Facebook channels, uh, Instagram, TikTok, right. name it. So thank you to everyone who's, if you've been watching the whole time or if you're just joining us, welcome. So yeah. We have a, a treat for you guys too. We got Jeremy Avila over here hitting up some deadlifts. We're gonna we're gonna go over there in just a couple seconds, and we'll we'll check out what uh, Jeremy's doing for today. But Jeremy is a world class lifter. Uh, he squat successfully squatted over 800 pounds in competition, and uh, he's knocking knocking on the door of a 900 pound deadlift. Um, it's really really uh, some rare territory to be deadlifting, uh, you know, 900 pounds. So it'll be kind of a treat today to see what he can do. I think right there he was just lifting like five plates, 500 pounds, uh, and it just <laughs> As you saw, it just looks uh, ridiculously easy. We're going to go over the form and technique of deadlifting as well, so follow me. What's up, Jeremy? Hey. What we got going on, man? So How you doing, deadlifts? man? Yeah, 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 just randomly? Yeah, just randomly. I found these uh, weights in this bar over here, so I just, yeah. just did what came natural. Well, it looks like you know what you're doing, so you mind explaining to people? Yeah, let's get up. We're going to get you mic'd up. You mind explaining to people? Uh, you deadlift... Um, so the stance that Jeremy was just using is a wider stance deadlift. It's a, called a sumo deadlift. And when you deadlift with your feet closer together, it's called a conventional deadlift. Where these things, uh, where the deadlifts have commonplace is the fact that you need to have a flat back or at least try to obtain a flat back throughout the entire range of motion. 
and we need to try to get our hips down on the lift in order to get good leverage in order to do the lift. But they end up being quite different once we get uh, beyond that. So Jeremy, take it over, man. Show us how to do a conventional deadlift. Conventional? Or you yeah, want to do a conventional? Yeah, we'll do a conventional. Start with that one. Yeah, so one before is this uh, sumo. And the big difference between these two is hands go inside of your knees on sumo. Conventional, the on the outside. That's pretty simple there. So I want to make sure now with my conventional, I like to pick about halfway over my foot and it should never really go too far up beyond that because we want to keep the load really close to our body. So as he's looking down from the top, the barbell is like uh, going right down the middle of his foot. Yeah, almost about where you retire shoes. Now, next thing I want to do, I have some visual cues I'm going to go over. So I want to, yeah, like I said, one of them is looking at the bars over my foot. The next one is that I'm even on the bar and then I want my feet underneath my hips. And these are all things that I can see. Now the next part is gonna be some cues that I can feel. I wanna start my hip hinge. And this is how I always start my deadlift, is finding, kinda of engaging my posterior chain. So I start by unlocking my knees, but still keeping my shoulders kinda of over my hips. Very similar to like bowing. That's all you're kinda yes. doing, just kinda of bowing forward. Exactly. Ooh, yes sir. <laughs> yep. Very good right there. <laughs> so what I wanna feel though, what I can't see, is I wanna feel my hamstrings kind of grab on. So you want feel, me to feel your hamstrings or you want to feel your can, hamstrings? Somebody should feel them. Can you feel uh, maybe, okay, maybe later, for another later, show. Later, next show. Next time. So I want, that's what I want to feel. So bend and hinge. Now once I've kind of got my shins, now if you look, I push my knees forward and the way I'll know I'm getting my hamstring size, my shins will get vertical. Boom. They're straight up. Now once I'm here, I want to let my hands show hang. Show us that one more time real quick. I think that's yeah. important. So my knees come forward kind of putting the load into my quads. And then when I go here and hinge, boom, shins are nice and vertical. I know for sure now that my posterior chain is gonna be engaged, my hammies. Now, once I feel those hammies, I wanna get my kind of grip ready. So I got about thumbs outside of my knees, just like that there. Now, we talked about the cues that we can see and the cues that we can feel. One cue that I wanna see is that as I come down, I don't want my knees to push into the bar or to cross too far over it. I want to still be able to see that bar a little bit. So that's another cue. Bend, hinge, and now what I can feel is I want to sit onto my hamstrings. And as I sit, my knees come forward a little bit. So now I'm loading my quads and my, and my backside. All right, next is my grip. So you see I got a hook grip here. So my fingers are going to grab my thumb. Now the other two grips, mixed grip or overhanded. So we're going with the hook grip today. This stops the bar from rolling and allows us to hold a little bit more weight. So, and once we get our hands in place, you guys can look at my elbows here. See how they're kind of pointed out? I want to bend the bar and get them to turn in. What we this will do- We just talked about that on the bench press too. Hey, yeah. all right, all right. <laughs> bench and deadlifting. So my lats, and I'm sure just like in the bench press, you're going to feel your lats engage. What this will do for us in the deadlift is help keep the bar close to us. Like we said before, we don't want it to float out in front of us. So bend, hinge, and sit. Now this is another cue that you can't see, you have to feel it. So you have to feel your lats tighten up. Boom, boom. And the last thing I want to do is kind of wedge myself in, kind of posture up, kind of show my, show my uh, I want to be able to read this shirt. If I'm looking in a mirror, I don't want to start here. I want to be able to read it so we can see nice and clear. So now let's just kind of go through it in real time. It takes a lot of preparation. It seems like you're just bending down and picking it up, which is ultimately what you're doing, but there's a lot that goes into it. Conventional. Jeremy is actually uh, so, so strong and so fast his coach, Jesse Burdick, had to actually work on ways of trying to figure out how to slow him down, how to get him to kind of like really hone in and focus on the form and technique because even though Jeremy's gifted and he's very, very strong and works very hard at it, he would literally like blow his body apart. You would, you would get injured a lot, right? Yeah, a little bit. And you had, to, you had to kind of peel back a little bit the amount of weight you were using, 
you had to get more in touch with like how you were actually doing the lift and not just lifting as much as possible, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, I overheard Jesse talking earlier about kind of living in the 50 to 75% range and using that, those percentages and different variations of the lift to really get comfortable and literally practice that technique and get sharp. And especially, you know, for myself, those are really helpful coming back from injury, being able to like, utilize those percentages and then, you know, bring them up to the heavier percentages and not have to touch heavy weights all the time. Keeps me a little healthier. Show us uh, the sumo deadlift. All right. So sumo, like we said earlier, hands go inside of the legs. So first thing I want to do is find where I want to put my feet. Now, unlike the conventional, we're gonna be a little closer onto the bar here. So usually about, say about an inch is probably the most you'd wanna be away, probably closer to a half inch. And next part, and this is gonna look very similar to our conventional, I'm gonna unlock my knees. But what I wanna make sure I do is if my knees, mm. so if my knees cave in, you guys see how the bar gets pushed forward? So that means I'm not gonna be able to keep the bar as close as I can. Right. So when I unlock my knees, I also want to spread the floor or drive my knees out. Now that's not just so I can now, additionally, you'll feel in your glutes, mead, kind of tighten up a little bit. This is also good. We want to kind of activate our hips and our glutes as we do this, but also clear room for bar pass. So starting here, bend, knees out, and a little hinge. Now, unlike the conventional, our, our shins are already almost pretty vertical here, so we don't need as much of a hinge. We want to be a little bit more upright. So bend, knees out, and hinge. Our grip, I like to start people shoulder width. We don't want to be in too close. This is really hard to kind of, yeah. kind of get any tension in our upper back, and I'm going to get kind of rounded forward there. So if I start to sh shoulder width, much easier to have, to have more proud chest. So bend, hinge, let my hands just hang. And now from here, I want to sit to the bar until my hands can grab, making sure I'm even. Now, what I need to set now is my hips. So I don't want to be in a squat, but I also don't want to be in like a stiff leg. So what that means is I don't want my hips in line with my knees or in line with my shoulders. They need to go somewhere in between. And I've, uh, I think I've heard you and Jesse talk about, you know, kind of shorten yeah, some close space, that close that yep. gap. So from the side, closing this gap here. You guys see that? Yep. Trying to close this gap. And the way we do that is by getting tall, keeping the bar in close, and get our knees out so we can have the bar in close. So, bend, hinge, sit. Now I'm gonna find my hips. And this last part, it's gonna take a little bit of, this is what really takes a lot of uh, practice and timing, is Pull getting, yourself into pulling position, yourself right? into position. So I wanna get my elbows, start to posture up. And with the sumo, I need to use this uh, tension so I can get a little bit taller. And so I can be tight off the ground so I don't get pulled forward. So, so your foot angle, the bar needs to be able to come on the inside of your leg. If you're getting scrapes on the front of your shins here, that's gonna make the lift pretty difficult. There are some people who are able to kind of do that Ed Cohen or you know squat style uh, sumo, but even they, a lot of them, are still gonna have their toes out wide enough yeah. to have that bar come inside. You want your toes pointed out. Yeah, we want them out. Now your mobility will be a big dictator and if you're able to do this or not. So if you're not able to do it now, don't worry. Keep working at it. Keep doing your 90s and 90s and stretching. You'll be able to, but that's what we want. Bar goes on the inside, not on the front of the shins. So if you look at where I got mine, they're on the inside. We're all getting mostly on the inside there. So let's do it in real time. I'm gonna walk up, bend, hinge, sit, engage my lats, find my hips, wedge, and go. The, uh, the sound that the weights are making, it might sound, it might sound or seem like he's uh, yanking the weights off the floor, but watching him right here in person, he's not yanking the weight off the floor. He's creating tension, pulling the slack out of the bar, and then lifting it. Thank you, man. I really All appreciate right, no it. Problem.
That was awesome. Good, great demonstration. Let's see what we got cooking. Oh my God. So we're, we, we're at the time where we need a quote. Uh oh. What 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 is speaking to you about this, or can you recall a story in your mm. life that maybe can you know lead to a quote that talks about the transformation because you've gone through so many. Yeah. And uh, you know, think about just starting out powerlifting, right, Mark? And um, Mark, that's, that's maybe working cool. smarter now. Yeah. And harder. I don't know. What do you What do you think? <laughs> uh, I don't know. What do you, What do you guys think? Can you let us mm. know in the chat? Yeah, like step by step. Down below, uh, no, just yeah. let us know. Like, what quote does this make you think of? You know, when it comes to transformation in your life <laughs> or someone else's life. While you're thinking of that, I'm going to just think, add Jeff? a couple more details. But, I was um, like, I'd rather quotes? be dead than average. Yeah. Andrew wrote, muscle is money. <laughs> That's a newer quote. Yeah. Right, right. So right now I'm just adding a, a little mist of black just to add a, a shadow layer. So whatever right. I put on top of this, it won't blend too much with the background. Um, the little contrast, so this quote, just like, imagine it like right here, just, right. you know, scribbled in. So let's look at the chat. Is, are there any quotes coming to mind, those of you People watching this? wrote in a, but we're, my brother's quote. Uh -huh. um, I'd rather be dead than average Ooh. is uh, pretty powerful. So I think that would be. Let's do that. I think that would be a good one. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start off with those two words first and then work around that. Yeah. So dead right. and average. While I'm doing that, can you share a little bit, maybe a story that uh, you remember yeah. how you thought of that quote? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is my other brother around here? Yeah, if someone can grab him, would be good. Yeah. Yeah, stick a mic on my bro would be good. My dad, he'll talk forever. I'm going to share a story with you guys about uh, my brother Mike. He passed away uh, over a decade ago now. Um, he was my childhood hero. He's also my brother Chris. He was his childhood hero, and he's the whole entire reason why we lift weights in the first place, because uh, Mike, AKA Mad Dog, was obsessed with lifting, and he was really more obsessed, I guess, with football, and then later on, professional wrestling, and uh, he, was the, uh, he was the leader of us, uh, three, three boys growing up in Poughkeepsie, New York, and he was, uh, whatever he did, you know, we wanted to follow suit, because he always seemed cool, he always seemed like he was good at what he did when he was, uh, when he was a young kid, he was way bigger than a lot of the other children. And like when he played baseball or anything he did, he was really, really good at. He'd get up, get up, get up to bat at baseball, and all the other kids would back way up. They were like, "Whoa, this kid's like, he knows how to like stand and he knows how to hit the ball." And he would, you know, knock the hell out of the ball and hit home runs. So, got my brother Chris here today, and uh, he can kind of uh, give you guys a What's little bit more on? information and give you a story on the quote that he ended up saying is in my brother Chris's movie, Bigger, Stronger, Faster, when Mike said, I'd rather be dead than average. Yeah, well, he would always say stuff like that, and we would laugh um, because it was always so extreme, you know? <laughs> and so... Like, what? I just remember um, that was a quote that Mad Dog... It, it's not like he said it one time. He actually used to say it all the time. In the movie, he doesn't actually ever say it, so it's one of those Mandela effects when everybody's like, oh, remember when Mad Dog says this in the movie? And I says... No, he actually didn't say it. I said it in the movie, quoting him. Right. But he had said it a million times in, in real life. I'd rather be dead than average. His thought process was that if he can't achieve like the ultimate level of what he wanted to do with his life, he'd rather be dead. Now, I know that's really extreme uh, to a lot of people, but I think a lot of people get that point. The first person that got that point better than anybody and quicker than anybody, and I think connected with Mark quicker than anybody in the fitness industry was C.T. Fletcher, you know, who would say fuck average, you know, he didn't, he didn't believe in it and, um, and Mad Dog didn't either and I think that that's a, uh, there is a, there is an issue with that, there's an issue with um, not accepting being average, I think we're all average in certain things in our life, but there is something inside of every single person in the entire world 
that excels, that they're good at. There's nobody I've ever met that's not good at anything, you know, at all. It's like oh, somebody always has some sort of strength and we need to learn, I think what, even what Mad Dog was saying is like learn how to embrace those strengths and use those strengths to the best of your ability and go all out in that thing that you're good at. And um, everything else, it's, it's gotta be okay to be average because you can't be great in every <laughs> single thing you do. Well, I actually think that my, you know, our, our brother, unfortunately, I mean, uh, you know, through drugs and through being bipolar and whatever else, what, whatever other issues he may have had going on, he just maybe was looking at things from a, uh, maybe not the greatest perspective. And I think ultimately, uh, now that I'm older and more mature, I can look at it and just say, actually, you know, if you're average every day, that's actually greatness to me. Uh, you put up sixes and sevens rather than trying to put up tens. And I think it might have been a fault of our brother where he, he wanted so badly to be great, but he forgot the smaller steps of just simply being good day in and day out. Uh, you know, you see many people that you know, many people you admire in your life um, that they just they just go to work every day. They just uh, provide for their family every day. They, they do these small things that we would think are quote unquote average, but when you actually look at it, you go, that's actually, that's actually really, really challenging. That's actually really hard to do that for decades and decades as my, my dad has done. And he's, he's our idol, I he's our hero. My opinion is being great is being average for a good enough amount of time to build up a skill to be great. Yeah, right. So you have to be kind of like average. Like nobody sees, um, when I, so when I came out of rehab, mm -hmm. for, I came out of rehab for drugs and alcohol. And when I came out, I was so broken. Everything hurt in my body. I was really fat and out of shape. I was sick every day. I just didn't feel good because I was just used to having drugs in my body every day. And nobody saw every single day the battle of me not doing drugs, being in that much pain and not drinking alcohol. Nobody saw me get up and go to the gym. Nobody saw me get up and physically cry as I walked around the block trying to build up you know, my body again. Like Nobody saw that. And I think it's like what we do when nobody's looking is what builds up to greatness. Nobody sees that you get up every morning, super early in the morning, and you'll you'll walk for an hour, and then you'll lift, and you'll do all these things. And like nobody sees that. They just see what's on Instagram. They see the end result. We have to realize that that end result is a matter of being average for a long period of time, doing things that are not super exceptional. Um, stepping back from that, you can't max out every day, right? You got to build up. Yeah, Jesse Burdick, uh, who got up here earlier, he talked about how in lifting we kind of live in this like 50 to 70 percent range, which um, I don't think anybody would want to admit that they are trying to keep their life in the 50 to 70 percent range. I think a lot of people are thinking like I got to be 90 percent or 100 percent all the time. I got to be great or I got to be perfect. But it's a lot easier and a lot more sustainable to uh, put up those fives and sevens day in and day out and have that be something that you can do for a long period of time in order to actually develop a skill set in order for people to even consider it to be great in the first place or for you to have any real uh, marked success that you would even uh, value as being successful. What's this guy got going on back there? It's looking really good, right? The, the, thing, the funny thing is the hardest part to me is I would, my handwriting's so bad, right? that'd be the worst part of it. <laughs> Which the other, the rest of it would be terrible too. But. Well, this doesn't translate well. Like, if you don't know. <laughs> it only works here. Right. <laughs> right. Looks good. All right, so we're getting near the end of this one. Again, we're doing this live stream. We're doing four total today. This is the third right. one. And uh, Mark is up. wearing the first one. So this I didn't one right here. That on Great him, job, man. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Awesome. It's become a uh, t shirt that's available at noon Fantastic. Pacific Standard Time to. Uh, 4 p.m. So. And then also we do have plans for these paintings as well, which I'm excited oh, to share yeah. about. We'll share about that when we're done, but let me splatter some paint. Paint splatter. See, Finishing see, touches. There's, a, there's an art to that too, you know? It's, it's just like... Uh, there's a technique to it. You still have to have a painting that is left behind, so you can't right. just fill it with splatter. But to me, what I use the splatter for is actual balance. Mm. So if something feels like it's too heavy on the right, you know, we'll throw a little color on the left to yeah. balance it out. How would you Contrast that? and depth. Yeah, how would you relate that? Just finding balance and doing what you're doing, whether it's your stance, like finding the yeah. art, I think, in everything. Oh, there's, there's, you know, there's so much technique that goes into every lift that we do. And um, as we've been talking kind of throughout the whole day of, of having that 
having that consistency and trying to have that balance. If you have the, if you have the balance, it's easier to be great or good at something. Yeah, there we All go. Right. There we go. Number three complete. Looks great. Thank you. Thank you. Also, you guys can't see right now, but uh, we've got a lot of great people here at the Super Training Gym. So thank you all for coming yeah. and hanging out with us this morning. Appreciate it. Uh, we're going to get this canvas changed out in the meantime. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Get a picture. All right. All right. Let's do this. We'll go on this side. You do that pose. I'll do this one. <laughs> uh-huh. Cool. All right. All right. So we're gonna get this canvas changed out, and uh, someone said, "Don't skip leg day." <laughs> I think I think that's my. Is that my mom? Leg day. No. Leg, day, yeah. leg day. There's some muscles in there. <laughs> Let's go to this camera right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, actually, are we on this camera? Oh, we are awesome. So uh, if you're watching this right now, wh whatever platform you're on, if you have any questions right now, whether it's art related or uh, fitness related, just ask in the chat below so we can answer them. Also, just to uh, to recap, we're here at the Super Training Gym in West Sacramento with Mark right. Bell. And uh, painting number one is now a t-shirt. Uh, the other three, we have some fun plans for those, so stay tuned. Also, where are you? Let us know. We just want to check in again before we get to the last painting. Where in the world are you? So what city, yeah. state, or country are you in? Uh, we can see some of the YouTube chats here. Maybe, Ryan, you could read some of the uh, chats up above that you see. If there's any, if it's not just my mom. Somebody said that the audio is a little messed up. Um, what is this feed from? This is uh, all the YouTube, YouTube and all okay. the Facebook. Okay. I moved it around, so I don't know if that helped at all. Got it. So we'll, yeah, we'll work on that right. in the meantime. All right, so they can hear this. So they said uh, Battle Creek, Michigan. That's uh, Brandon Knight. Welcome. Hey, uh, again, let us know where you at in the world. Are you, are you ever surprised, you know, when you get uh, comments from people, you know, all different parts of the world or yeah, they're, what they're, is that like? Um, I think uh, years ago I went out and uh, did a seminar in, uh, in Montana and the seminars I, w I, w I was doing at the time were at CrossFit facilities. Uh -huh. So it was very common for me to see my products at CrossFit facilities and things like that. But um, I went to just like a random gym in yeah. Montana and uh, saw like fans and saw like my product in their gym and I was like, holy crap, this is, <laughs> yeah. this is like working. Like this is actually really amazing. So that was really cool. And what about international? I'm sure you've traveled internationally. Yeah. Where have you been where you're like, this is crazy that these people, we don't speak the same language, but yeah. we do in the sense of. Yeah, I've had people uh, come up to me and like, you know, yell like profanities. They're so excited <laughs> that they, and I think maybe just cause like the way I am on some of the social media platforms, I think people think they know me. So yes. I've had people run up and like hug me. Okay. And my kids are always like, what? <laughs> Who are these people? Yeah, like yeah. what's going on? Yeah, I've, I've had that happen like uh, just, you know, local airports and yeah. then even like, um, you know, going to like Italy or traveling around the world. A little bit here and there so it's, yeah. it's always it's interesting because at certain places I get recognized a lot mm -hmm. if, if it's a fitness thing obviously right yeah and then it's a lot more casual if I'm you know out and about or traveling yeah so uh, before we get to this shout out to uh, rub master that's their name it's on YouTube <laughs> Denmark uh, one fit training in Charlotte North Carolina as well and again Brandon Knight in Battle Creek Michigan let us know where Denmark, you're at we got somebody in Denmark. We got one more painting to go any any comments up above uh, Somebody wants to know if you're still doing the OMAD diet, Mark. I am, yeah, just uh, eating once a day, and I get an opportunity to eat with uh, David tonight. He's slumming it tonight <laughs> with us. Yeah, <laughs> eating my one meal a day with him, so uh, I'll just be ordering many plates of food. But, yeah, it's, it's been really effective for me. It's been helping me a lot. I think uh, sometimes when you have a lot of rules to your diet, it just gets to be a drag and gets to be really hard. This is like one simple rule. Um, there's a couple other things I mixed in there just to make sure I don't go overboard, even with the one meal, because ultimately it's just about, it's an energy balance that you're after when you're working on nutrition. But yeah, I'm still doing it and I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm eating three times a day. Anyone that wants to know, just I'm eating three <laughs> times, sometimes more. Um, also, one last thing before we get, so uh, real quick, our background, uh, my brother, 
worked at a Starbucks, was managing a Starbucks near, I think your old, old gym. Super training gym. Your old yeah. super training gym. You would go in there often and you guys uh, sort of, uh, you know, got to know each other. And then at some point I was having a bowl of uh, pokey in downtown Sacramento and this, I, I feel this large hand on my shoulder. I turn around, I look up and it's, you know, Mark hovering over me. I'm thinking, did I scratch your car outside? And he's like, no, my name is Mark Bell. I know your brother. I'm like, ah, yes. And that was maybe five, four, yeah, five about, years yeah, ago. About, yeah, about that. Yep. And so we just kept in touch over time. I've visited here. I've been able to do the podcast uh, with you. And then maybe a few weeks ago, we came in here and did a little lifting yep. education with you. So you taught us great some moves. That was amazing. And, uh, and then we had this idea of really collaborating, right. you know, bringing these worlds together, our minds together. You know, ultimately, yes, I love to create, but I really want to, to inspire people through my journey and you want to do the same through yours. So that is really the, the inspiration behind today's paintings, all four. Uh, besides making really cool products like this t-shirt that'll be available at noon to four today, the, the, the paintings will become prints as well. And we'll share about that after this. Mm next painting. Brandon Knight said he saw you uh, All right. live painting uh, with KISS. At the KISS concert, yeah, that was crazy. So in 2019, I was the opening act for KISS all around the world. We did an arena and stadium tour, which was just insane. And I'm a painter, which is crazy yeah. here. So, uh, but Seems let's get to amazing. this last painting. Let's last do one, it. Yes. here we go. All right. Painting number four. And I think we're actually good on time too. It's only, yeah. it's only noon. No, it's great. I was thinking we're gonna go like, three hours. But we're cranking right I think through we're it, good, man. Yeah. We're cranking right through it. All right. So this is going to be a fun Any one. Any questions you guys have? You know, you, I saw earlier someone asked about the OMAD diet. Any other questions, uh, Ryan, if you want to relay them to me, that's great. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So when it comes to all forms of body fat, you lose it the same way. Uh, and when people talk about uh, what contributes to somebody gaining body fat, it all happens in the same way. And it's not necessarily from sugar, it's not necessarily from fat, it's not necessarily from protein. It comes from one thing and it just comes from overeating. So in order to lose belly fat or what people will consider to be stubborn fat, is you, you have to figure out a way to discontinue overeating. You need to figure out how to consume uh, less energy over a period of time. And you can do this uh, in many different ways. There's a lot of great ways of doing this. Uh, number one thing what I would start with is to eat whole foods, um, to eat uh, meat, vegetables, and fruit, and kind of in that order. And if you do that, that uh, works really well because the body is equipped to recognize those signals from those foods, and it's able to uh, adequately kind of measure and weigh your food for you without you measuring and weighing it. Um, you want to try to stick to uh, not necessarily single ingredient foods, but low ingredient foods. So if you're going to make a burger for yourself, you throw like cheese on it, maybe some salt, and you cut, try to keep it at that. But once we wrap that thing in a bun, and once we put bacon on top of it, and mayonnaise, like now we're starting to get into trouble because we're going to be over consuming calories. It's not the bread, it's not the carbs. It's the overconsumption of calories over a long period of time. This is how people get fat in the first place. You see a lot of young children are not, you know, pe people when they're younger, they weigh a lot less. Anybody watching this right now might have this experience. They might have weighed less 20 years ago, right? You might have weighed a lot less 20 years ago or 10 years ago. And the reason why you weighed less 10 years ago is probably not because of your diet. It might be because of your diet, because you may have found a diet that works for you, but in many cases, it's just a lack of movement. You stop moving somewhere along the lines. But we have so many hyper palatable foods that are super convenient. It uh, trips our brain and does not allow you to accurately weigh and measure out those foods. And so therefore we overconsume those foods. And when you overconsume those foods, there's a price to pay and the price to pay is body fat. Your body will gain body fat, and so the, you know, the question here is about stubborn body fat or belly fat. The only way to lose belly fat is to figure out a consistent way for, to consume less calories, which doesn't always mean that you have to eat less. It just means that you might need to change your selection in your food. You'll be consuming less energy, but there's only two forms of energy for us. 
there's, there's three macronutrients and there's only two forms of energy. And what I mean by that is carbohydrates are a form of energy and so is fat. Protein, I don't really consider to be a source of energy. I think protein is more for building and gaining. And so you would eat about one gram of protein per pound of body weight, which for some people that's a huge shock and that's a lot. The average American consumes about 13% protein in their diet. That's uh, way too low. It should be probably closer to double that because when you eat more protein, you're helping to put more muscle on your body, which sometimes people think muscle is going to make them bulky, but all it's going to do is change your body fat percentage, which is going to help you burn calories when you're at rest. Uh, additionally, by uh, consuming more protein, it's going to drive down your hunger. It's going to help uh, with being satiating, but it's not always satisfying is the problem. Eating a chicken breast uh, is not the same as eating potato chips, right? But we need to figure out a way to eat less of that stuff and a way to eat more protein. So if you just have a, a diet that's based around protein and uh, you kind of build your diet out around, in my opinion, meat is the best, and then you maybe throw in some vegetables here and there, just for digestion and just for some uh, micronutrients and some fiber. Uh, you can't go wrong, but a lot of people, they just don't, they don't want to uh, really stick to something like that for long enough. And the, the stubborn fat that someone might have, it's the last area where you lose weight. It's the first area that you put weight on, whatever the stubborn area is for you. And the uh, worst news of it all, it's the last area to where you lose fat. So. If you lost a considerable amount of fat and you're pinching some fat on your body and like, why can't I lose this last little bit? It's because you're probably about 70% there. You need to hang in there and you'll need to kind of stay at this new body weight for a while. And once you do that, your body will say, hey, all right, we're cool with it. We can burn off that last little bit of fat. But at first, your body doesn't want to do that. Burning body fat is not, um, it's not that it's unhealthy, but when you start to do it in large amounts, the body will kind of it will get a little concerned about what you're doing and you won't really always feel so great. Um, so anyway, that's how you get rid of, uh, that's how you get rid of any body fat. Got another question? Uh, nope. Grant, disaster, about well, real quick, uh, I want you to answer that, but also at some point I want you to, uh, to share about, you know, you're obviously passionate about the act of lifting. Yeah. When did you become passionate about the knowledge? The art of lifting it and mm -hmm. share that after the yeah. TRT question. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just, I'm going to use that as fuel for uh, inspiration yeah. for this. Yeah, someone is asking about testosterone replacement therapy uh, and hormone replacement therapy. Nowadays, there's doctors you can go to. Um, I'm with a company called Merrick. You can look them up online um, and you can get your blood work done. And then, in accordance to your blood work done, getting done, you can take uh, bio-identical hormones, which is testosterone, which your body naturally produces, which people tend to make a big deal about because it is a steroid and so people lose their mind. But again, uh, the, these hormones can help promote you to have more muscle mass on you, which makes this whole diet and fitness thing a lot easier. But it also just makes life easier because with a little jolt of testosterone or keeping your testosterone levels at a level that represents you in your 30s or you in your 20s uh, is a lot better than the representation that you might have at 60 or 70. So it's something that can, uh, and testosterone is also very, very motivating. It's very, like it's motivating to have your, uh, just your hormones in general optimized. You might go and get blood work done, find out your testosterone's fine, but you also, as a male, you might find out that your estrogen is really high. And so these are all things that we want to try to uh, figure out how to mitigate and how to uh, get headed in the right direction. So I, I recommend it. I think most people should at least look into it. It doesn't hurt. Getting your blood work done is, is a uh, fantastic way to uh, take a snapshot of where your health is at so you can get your uh, lipid profile checked as, along with some of the other hormones and try to make sure you're headed in a better direction. Me uh, Merrick, I think it's uh, M-A-R-E-K, Merrick. Um, so David had a question kind of about, you know, lifting and kind of the uh, meathead side of things of like going in and just lifting some big weights. But when did I get obsessed or more into, I guess, the science of it, the X's and O's of lifting? Um, I would have to say that was pretty immediate. It was pretty much, uh, you know, right away. My brothers were 
uh, sticklers for like form and technique whenever I lifted. They want to try to make sure that I didn't get hurt. And I remember many times where they were telling me like, you need to use less weight. Like you're doing that like crap, like that does not look good. And even I would go to our local gym, Mid Hudson Bodybuilding in Poughkeepsie. And when I would go and lift, uh, I, again, I was lifting like crap because I was trying to lift heavier weight. And they were like, no, there's a technique to this. There's a way of doing this. And so I had to really strip the weight down. And I it was really, fr I was really actually mad and frustrated. I was like, I don't want to just, just lift with 25 pounds on each side. Like I want to put the bigger weights on there. And they're like, but you, you do not possess the ability, ability currently to do it properly. So <laughs> you think you're doing it correctly, but you're way off. And so I had to do that. And I remember doing that with squats. I would squat down and I would only go to here. And I would try to do it with like two plates. And my brother just sent again, they were like, that just looks awful. That's not a squat. I don't know what you're trying to do, but it's an abomination. You need to stop doing that. And so I learned over a period of time that there are better ways of going about doing things. And at some point in my life, I started to become obsessed with trying to figure out and find out what's optimal. And so I started just looking where everybody else looked and I looked at magazines. A lot of, uh, at the time there was a magazine called Muscle Media, I would look there. And then I would just try to research stuff as much as I could. I fell in love with a lot of the work from Louis Simmons and Charles Poliquin and uh, many people that later on in life uh, became mentors to me. And I was very fortunate to learn from both of my brothers and the local gyms in the area, uh, learning from great powerlifters on how to build strength. There's, there's a really interesting thing when it comes to getting strong is that you're, when you're working on strength, there's a big difference between building your strength and testing your strength. Testing your strength can sometimes build your strength, but building your strength is a really long, tedious, boring ass process. There's, in fact, there's even an article that was written by uh, a legendary strength coach named Jim Wendler. Uh, and the article was called Boring But Big because it is, it really can be kind of monotonous. You're, you feel like you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again, but as you know, anybody with a good golf swing, what do they do? They swing a golf club a lot. Uh, anybody that's good at tennis, they've been on a tennis court a lot. Anybody that's good at art has probably uh, picked up a paintbrush or two in their time. Like, or, or a towel. Or a towel, yeah. Covered in paint, yeah. These, thing, these things take a long, they take a long time uh, to be able to build up and to be able to learn. And I, I got that message early on from uh, my brothers and from some people at uh, local gyms. And the other thing, the other part of that too, is I went to a seminar that my wife paid for uh, in Columbus, Ohio, that kind of changed the trajectory of my life forever. I uh, was at a seminar that uh, a guy by the name of Dave Tate ran the seminar. And when he started to explain this system of training, and when I was able to actually comprehend what he was saying, that was a moment right there that turned a switch for me and it showed me that I can learn a lot better and a lot more effectively than I thought because when it came to school, I wasn't able to learn shit. But when it came to learning about weights, I was able to learn it and then I was able to start to teach it. And when I took that knowledge and started to incorporate that into videos and into communicating with other people and I saw people go from deadlifting 200 pounds to 300 pounds to 400 pounds and so on, I was like, oh, like maybe I can learn, maybe I can teach, maybe I can get good at some of this stuff. And that's what uh, just kind of allowed me to grow and expand and be able to now be the people's coach. Got another question? I got one right here. Ching. Um, I'm sure there's shit in here that's not great for you, uh, but I try to uh, just think of things uh, I guess in the most reasonable way. Um, I used to be 330 pounds. I'm not 330 pounds anymore. I'm 230 pounds. And so from like a health perspective, uh, I don't think it's too big of a deal. So I'll pop uh, these here and there. I'll drink some uh, caffeine here and there from coffee. Um, there's, there's research, there's conflicting research on uh, whether sucralose and aspartame are deadly or, or cancerous or, or whatever. But it's my personal belief that the number one problem that faces America is obesity and is uh, trying to figure out ways to uh, not overeat all the time and just not be like, being overweight is one thing, but not being like gluttonous about it. So I feel that 
at the moment, I feel like I got that uh, down pretty good and I don't have to really worry about that too much. So I'll drink my diet drinks and drink my energy drinks here and there. But I do think people overdo it. I know a lot of young, young people uh, overdo it. I myself, through my powerlifting career, have definitely way overdone the uh, pre-workout drinks and stuff like that. You have to do a lot of your training without that stuff because you, you really, you, you don't want to have to lean on that all the time. And you can get yourself in some weird compromising spots and positions by doing that all the time. In fact, it's a strategy that a lot of really good power lifters will use. Well, they'll take those pre-workout things, they'll take them away from themselves on purpose. And they'll go through like a period of time where they don't utilize them because they're trying just to rely on their own inner strength for a little bit. And then maybe when a competition comes back around, they might start to introduce them for some harder training uh, here and there. But just, I would just be a little cautious with, uh, make sure you don't overdo it. Oh my God. This is some craziness you right here. recognize this guy. Mm-hmm. Little. So I'll, I'll share the inspiration behind this as, again, a lot, of, a lot of what you teach are tools to transform. And, um, That's awesome. you know, sometimes I relate too much to that guy. You know, the guy, right. he's happy. There's a, there's a reason why that guy's happy. <laughs> it's because it's, it's really, really easy to be comfortable and like not hurt. So I love to run. I, I, I usually max out a little, about three and a half miles and I'm trying to get up to six, but nice. you know, this, this guy starts coming out after like a mile and he's, and we have this talk and he's ready to go back to the studio. Yeah, we got it in. We're doing what Mark said, we're being <laughs> active, you know, post it on Instagram. We're good, just smile, we're good. <laughs> And, and this is the guy that I'm constantly fighting with. And, and this person inside right here is like, who really wants to live? Like who deserves to live? Right. But she, you know, it's not always like, you know, being kind sometimes to yourself, right. at least for me, it's different for everyone. But this, this is like an image that I feel like maybe a lot, of, I hope more people can relate to. Right. We're just constantly fighting with ourselves to be better, to transform. And I don't know, what do you, what do you think? What are your thoughts on I'm fighting that like inner person inside. A hundred percent. I think the, the hardest thing you'll ever overcome is hardest thing you'll ever overcome is yourself. I, I really believe that. It's uh, the internal dialogue. I mean, think about how many thoughts in, in one day that you have to deflect and that you have to change and you, you say, oh, I can't do this or uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. Oh my God, I'm yeah. tired. Like you gotta. Even when I'm painting, this yeah. guy is like, "That's good enough." Right. Let's, let's see how it is. Don't touch it up. And this guy's like, "Bro, right? Start painting. Start adding some details. Be aware of of where you want to go, so that it influences every decision after right. this." And, and sometimes it, he's not pretty. It mm -hmm. also relates back to uh, calories. Even like, your the human body is designed to oh, uh, preserve calories and conserve energy yeah. so we don't get into compromise of a position so it's very easy for your mind to start telling you hey you should probably relax yeah you should probably yeah. just chill I mean how many people have uh, how many of you have you know uh, gotten done with a week and you're like man it's been such a long week really it's not the week isn't any longer you know it's just how you interpreted that week you somehow felt that it was more difficult than normal, but difficulty is fine. Difficult, you know, pressure makes diamonds. Difficulty is like, we want things to be difficult. We want things to be challenging. There's no other way to grow. So if you were like, oh, this cool, this week was easy, that actually kind of sucks. Like, that's not great. If the week was easy, there's nothing to grow from. There's nothing to pivot from. There's nothing really to learn. Oh, that week was the same as last week. But if this week was harder than last week, that's actually kind of a cool thing. And over time, it will, it will get a little tougher, but it will be incrementally a little bit tougher and your body will adjust to whatever it is that you're trying to do. I heard Joe Rogan recently say that, he said, what I do wouldn't be hard if you were me. And I thought like, that is an amazing quote because somebody might be a brain surgeon, right? Somebody might be a brain surgeon and I could sit there and think that would be, <laughs> That would be like impossible to figure out how to be a brain surgeon, but it wouldn't be hard if I went to school for it and if I was that other person that was able to comprehend and learn all those things. So 
I think we, we need to kind of work on, uh, just in general, I, I need to work on it myself, is you know, reinterpreting everything that I once knew and reinterpreting the things that come at me and come to me and start to think of replacement words for things like uh, can't, you know, trying to be more logical and reasonable. Um, there are going to be times where you may feel like you literally cannot do something at that moment, but it's a better conversation to tell yourself, that's not good for me right now. I'll work on getting to that at some other point. And I have worked on that in many aspects of my life, even with uh, being able to afford stuff. Rather than just saying, I, I, I'll never be able to have that, I would just say, I can't afford that at the moment. I can't afford a private jet at the moment. <laughs> but maybe someday, if that's a goal of mine, maybe I can figure it out. So I think ultimately you can figure out just about anything it just takes a long ass time. We need to work on uh, deflecting and rearranging uh, our internal dialogue. And that internal dialogue coming out as a monster right this, there. This, this internal dialogue is serious right now. But you know, I imagine this in my gym, at home, in our gym. Like this is what I want to remind myself, like it's time right. for that conversation because it's going to happen. And I think, the, honestly, once you realize that you're having that conversation, that you're telling yourself that we're good. Right. That's enough. We, we can call it quits from here. If you can recognize that conversation, I mean, my God, that's like one of the best places to start. Right. Now that is looking really cool. It's kind of nice to take my time. Usually I'm like doing these things in you know, five, six minutes <laughs> on stage. Oh yeah, you gotta like yeah, you gotta move along, right? Yeah, but this is a cool. This is a, a whole different style of, of painting as well. The camera, this camera guy keeps backing up just a little bit more and more. Right. <laughs> All the shots started off close. So you've got quite the team here. So while we were planning this, I had the chance to to come in here. We did a little walkthrough, and I got to really see you sit down with your team. And I have to say, they work incredibly hard. They've run a well-oiled machine. Thank you. I'm sure it may be different on the inside, but from the outside, it really appears that way. And so I just want to ask a quick question as I'm, I'm getting near the end of this about leadership. Uh, when did you also realize that you had to shift from, okay, I'm now getting this knowledge for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm growing, I'm changing, I need help. How do I translate this into leading a team of people now? Right. Because like, you have a quite a large team now. You're also leading a community as well. So can you just touch on that a little bit? <laughs> just about leadership? Yeah. Your thoughts? Um, it's fun. You know, uh, I think uh, the selection of the correct people is probably the main thing. Uh, I don't really in view myself as a great leader. In fact, I, there's, I have many flaws. and. Probably my worst flaw is like I'm not a great communicator. I'm always like, I just want this to be cool. And then like I leave it to Jessica and then she's got to figure out how to make it cool. <laughs> Which um, she does. Yeah, she and she does. She figures it out. But you have I think just in you know, in trying to build any team or if someone's trying to build something, uh, you have to select people that are good and you have to take your time with that. It it takes a, it takes a long time to kind of find the right people. And it might seem like a good idea to like bring in this person or that person, but uh, if they don't really fit exactly what it is you're trying to do, uh, then they, then it, it just it won't work out. So for me, it's been you know selecting the correct people, and many of the people that work here, and many of the people that have worked here in the past, a lot of times I'll just say like, what do you do? Like, why are you still here? Like, go home. Like, you know. But they care a lot. They care a lot. They want to make things better. Uh, they want to see things through. They want to make sure that we. Uh, follow up on a different uh, projects, but that doesn't really start. I don't think it starts with me. I mean, maybe they are uh, inspired by some stuff that I do or say, but I think ultimately they came in here with something that I recognized that I felt was special, and I'm just trying to keep that keep that flame uh, burning and keep and keep that running. So I think ultimately it's just a matter of like selecting really really good people. And I think that people think they're talented at selecting good people, but I, I don't think it's really, I don't think it's, I don't think it's really uh, much of a talent. I think it's like um, you might unfortunately have to uh, 
in, in a, from a business perspective, you might have to go through a lot of people, which really sucks and is really hurtful and it's not fun, but you may have to bring in people and then you may have to say, well, it's just ain't working out. We'll have to bring somebody else in. So for me, it's kind of, it's been that way and it's, uh, it's not easy, but um, I think the fact that I'm, I am here every day, I'm in here every day lifting. So the team or people, anybody that works here sees me working every day. Uh, I also do a podcast with uh, Andrew and Ensema, and they see that I'm I'm put in the same amount of work that they do. Um, I think people see that I have uh, done well and been successful in business, made progress there. I've made progress in lifting and done things with powerlifting, and my powerlifting career is over. But I'm still have goals in fitness, and uh, I'm still working towards things. So I think that people are seeing. Like, oh, that's cool. Like, he's still trying to make progress. He's still working on getting better. He's still working on improvement. And then it kind of maybe leaves them with, with no excuse on why they can't continue to work and strive for stuff. Because uh, I think, you know, when people think about people that have reached a level of success, they're just thinking like, oh, I would just be on a beach somewhere sipping on a margarita. <laughs> um, I could do that, but I, I that's not my idea of fun. I want to continue to put up points on the scoreboard every single day. And I think that everybody that works here wants to do that too. And we, yeah, we want to celebrate here and there, but you know, we spike the ball and you know, get back in the huddle for the next play. Oh my God. That is looking awesome. Is this going above your bed? It's going, it's <laughs> going on the ceiling. Yep. <laughs> We're gonna recruit somebody out of the crowd here. Yeah, so we're getting near the end. If you wanna do one more interview mm -hmm. with someone and then I'll be able to wrap this up and then we'll just share more about these paintings. All right. What's happening? Come on up, Jessica. <laughs> you knew you'd be picked on. <laughs> we got a microphone for you coming up here. Those bushy eyebrows I got from my dad over there. <laughs> Thanks, pops. Keeping the sweat out of my eye, out of my eyeballs. They <laughs> <laughs> serve a purpose. Oh, hello there. Oh, Dodd. he almost blew up the whole almost live stream. Blew up the whole thing. What's it like watching uh, David Garibaldi in action now that you've seen him live a couple times now, twice? Three times. Three times. I think it's really cool. It's not I think bad, it's a, right? A different experience, yeah. I'm actually not going to move out. I'm, I'm actually going to squat You're here. You're going to be here. Yeah. I'm moving in rent free. Just you know. There's an office yeah. in the back. I, I love it. Yeah. yeah. I love it. So Jessica's been with Super Training Gym and Slingshot for many, many years now. It's been, I don't know, four years, five years. Over, over five with ST. Over four for Slingshot. And uh, if you don't mind sharing with us your uh, weight loss journey weight loss story yeah um <laughs> so i rode in college and when i left college i was left with like anxiety and a bunch of depression and all that good stuff that most college kids have when they graduate and they don't Sounds know what they're like doing a lot with their of life fun yeah and then i was trying to figure out what i wanted to do and that was lifting but in between that time period i had gained some weight and then you know, other circumstances happen and I gained some more weight and found Super Training Gym. Mark was like, hey, <laughs> we should we should get this figured out. And then I lost, I don't know. I kind of like made her work for us. I'm like, you're gonna work for us. And then she's like, I got a job though. <laughs> he poached me for like three months and I thought he was kidding. Um, but then he kept after it. So I was like, all right, well, I hate my job anyway. So I might as well. So then I ended up quitting my job, taking a pay cut, and then coming here. It was worth it. <laughs> and then how did, your, how did you start to lose weight? How did you start to get momentum with that? Um, just every day. You saw any time that I was like down, he'd be like, you're coming with me today. You're going to work out with me. Um, and that was just We have enough. some of those, yeah, videos on YouTube even. Yeah. Where I made Somewhere. you work out with me. Yep. 
don't look those up. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just uh, was a constant, just start and it gets easier. And once you start, it gets easier and easier and easier. What'd you do food wise? Uh, what did you actually do? The first time was keto. Mm -hmm. so I did that work? War on carbs, yeah, it worked. I would say uh, I lost like 30 or 40 pounds. And then I gained some back because it wasn't just as sustainable as I needed it to be. Mm -hmm. At least for me and my lifestyle, I know it works for a lot of people. It just, it worked for me for a shorter period of time because I had never really been on a diet before, mm -hmm. per se. The first time I ever lost weight was through college and it was because my coach was like, you should figure out your portion sizes. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like noted. Noted. But I didn't really like change anything about my diet. I just cut my portions down. And then and from keto, where'd you go from there? Um, counting my macros. If it fits your macros. And it worked. And it worked. And I lost a good chunk of weight there too. What was the hardest part of that? Um, Cause you've lost what, 60 pounds or 80 pounds? Yeah, like 60 plus pounds. Yeah. Um, the, the hardest part is just committing to it and like learning from it. Um, it's like an emotional thing for me more than like a technical standpoint. I know what I need to do, but it's that emotional part that I have to get through. That's the hardest part. Like you don't feel like eating certain foods uh, maybe in accordance to how certain days go type thing? Uh, wait, what? Hmm? Say that again? What do you mean by emotional? It's um, just like if I'm super stressed out, if I'm tired or overwhelmed or having a bad day. It makes the nutrition side of it way more difficult for you. Yeah, it's easier for me to fall into my old bad habits mm -hmm. of relying on food to make me feel better instead of working through things like an adult. And <laughs> are most of the are most of those bad habits burned away or not? no? They're still sitting there. They're still there. Yeah, it's a fight every day. I think it's important for people to know because I think that people just think, oh well, it's it's easy for them because they're in fitness. But like yeah. my bad habits are still they're still like waiting inside me, like that angry uh, person in the middle there. Still like within it's, you. Yeah, it's still just sitting there, like yo, like feed me. And still pokes at me every day. It's like, hey, Reese's. you should have some peanut, peanut butter, butter cups. cups. <laughs> <laughs> you should have some pizza. Those kinds Wait, of things. So interrupt, what, yeah, yeah. What is that person telling me? Because I want to put that on here. I want to imagine this in, uh, you know, people's gyms. They're, it's on, it's front of the treadmill, and you're you're good. You're feeling good, mm. but that inner voice is right. saying something else. Right. So keep going. It's mm. within you. I think that's a really yeah. good one. Yeah, Jessica mentioned. Uh, Within You, which is the name of my new supplement brand. But as I mentioned earlier, like, uh, I think, uh, you know, all the answers that we need are, are within us. So I think Within You would within be great. That, that's, sit, that's, that's sitting there. You yeah. Within, within You. Yeah. Mm. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm sweating now. <laughs> I think another part of it, too, is to figure out, you know, how to occupy your mind. It's something I talk about quite a bit. And uh, I know Elon Musk, you know, has the goal to occupy Mars. But when he talked about that, I found that to be inspirational and amazing but at the same time I was thinking you know, there's a lot of people here still on earth we're still on planet earth here and we're suffering a lot and our our minds I've just noticing like a lot of people's a lot of people are stressed out a lot of people have a lot of anxiety and I just challenge people to occupy your mind I challenge you to work on expanding your mind and for us we've been able to occupy our mind with fitness and I think in some weird way the nutrition side of it becomes part of the hobby. Um, how often and how much are you thinking about how much time are you putting into? I know maybe sometimes it seems a little more effortless at this point, but like you are with like a, a, a company provides uh, some prep meals for you. Before yeah. that, you were prepping your own stuff. Yeah. So there's like a lot, right? There's a lot, a lot of uh, like intentionality behind what you do every day. Yeah, it's just about making a choice um, and when I, when I had come off of counting my macros, I'd obviously gained some more weight back because it's just a constant. Nothing's ever linear. It's just going to yeah. go like this all the time. And progress will always be like this. Um, so once you recognize that, you're going to be way better off because the moment you go back up, you're going to be super discouraged, and then you'll go off plan or 
go off the walls. So just having, understanding that it's constant. You'll go up and down and up and down and that's normal, that's okay. And it's expected. Right. Um, but uh, I knew that I was okay even when I have my moments where I'm up because I made a conscious decision every single day to do something better. Even if it's not always like the best day I've ever had in my life, it's just a constant state of like, I really do want this. And so I make that a priority right. for me. So making my meals or having them eat right foods with me or talking to my coach about, you know, hey, I'm having, a str I'm struggling today or, and making adjustments there and knowing that that's okay. So you still might make a choice that's not great, that's not the most optimal, but it's better than what you used to do. Yeah, and it's not going off plan if it's, you're having, you're having that balance with life. Like you have to be able to balance a plan that you maybe put in place and then like what happens actually in like real life right. reality. So. Yeah, if you if you just continually try to eat less and, and do that all the time, you'll actually end up being less at some point and then the stresses of life will be insurmountable and they'll, they'll crush you. <laughs> so you gotta be kind of strategic with this stuff and allow yourself an opportunity here and there to eat something that's off plan. But I agree with what Jessica said there, is like just see if you can make a better decision, see if you can make a better choice rather than kind of falling back into those pitfalls uh, that we've fallen into before. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Wow. All right, do you want to handprint this one? That you is looking amazing, really sure. All right, let's just go ahead and just, you, you choose a color. It's looking fancy. This is your area right here. All right. Don't, that's your boundaries. We'll do it at the same time. All and right. This last one, so I got some blue. Do I just take, dip all the way in there? Just like, actually dip a little and then spread it around your hand. Like oh, okay. This. Yes. We're gonna do this at the same time. Hmm. I think what I'm gonna go feeling? with mainly this yellow here. All right. And then, so just a little and then you can spread it around. There we go. You okay. need to, uh, go ahead and turn around the other way. You can straddle the paints like, oh. like that over there. Oh, like this? Yep, yep. Whoop. All right, and then you're gonna go in this area right here. I'm gonna go right here. All right. We're gonna do this in one, two, three. There we go. Boom. All done. I love it, thank you. <laughs> Got a little, All right. little paint going here. Yes, we'll do this real quick. All right. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is the last, we'll, we'll stand wide so they can see the painting. Mm -hmm. This is the fourth painting that we created today during this live stream. We're here at Super Training Gym uh, with Mark Bell. Uh, we're Dripping streaming paint. across channels on his, on mine, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. And uh, thank you everyone who's been watching this for the last over two hours now. Uh, so real quick, uh, it, it is now noon, so you can go to, what's the website? MarkBellSlingshot.com. MarkBellSlingshot.com to get this shirt. This was the first painting I created today. Uh, when the stream is over, you can go back and see it, but it's only available for the next four hours. So go to markbellslingshot.com, get that limited edition t-shirt from one of today's paintings. Also, the rest of the paintings, the last three, we're gonna create into an art collection. What? Uh, we're gonna be doing uh, prints, canvas prints. Oh, here you go. Thank yeah. you, appreciate uh, it. Prints, canvas prints, and really to celebrate You've got a big anniversary coming up, yep. not only your wedding anniversary, but also the Slingshot mm -hmm. anniversary. Absolutely. When is that? So I think uh, the Slingshot anniversary is in July. And I think, you know, some of what we're going to do with some of these is we're going to make posters. But in addition to that, we might make knee sleeves or elbow sleeves. And I'm sure there'll be even just kind of further collaborations down yes. the road with you just in general. Yeah. Since this has been so much fun to do. Yeah, you know, these are going to be the new motivational posters that I think every gym around the world should have. Hell you know, yeah. they used to be like the, the ones you would see in your elementary class, you know, like a, like a team growing, like we'll do this together. Right, right. This is gonna be the new the new motivational poster. I don't know if you know this. It. Hopefully it'll end up in high school gyms, uh, you know, professional lifting gyms all I'm around excited the world. For but uh, today has been nothing short of inspiration. I mean, I think more so just spending time with you leading up to this. Um, I know it's not the last time, but just I wanna give you your flowers in front of everyone, man. You are an incredible, being leader and super inspiring on many levels. So thank you, man. I really, I really appreciate you. I appreciate that, and I'm pulling energy from you and pulling yeah. motivation and inspiration 
from what you do as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so thank you everyone. Again, go to markbellslingshot.com to collect this t-shirt, only available until 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. In the meantime, follow at Mark Smelly Bell That's right. on across platforms. I am at Garibaldi Arts. And are we on the center, center camera or? All right, we're on the center camera. Thank you guys so much. We're gonna leave it on the center camera for a little bit with this painting. Maybe we'll zoom in on, just leave it there for like five minutes to give them that last, uh, that last look. So, peace. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I'm gonna take my bucket and go home. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Enjoy the last so cool. of this painting. Get one last look. Thanks for watching the live stream. Peace. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>